I just survived 5,000 days in hardcore Minecraft. That's 6 million seconds. Wow. Yeah, I really need to go outside. Anyways, I converted the last 1,000 days of footage into this epic movie. So whether you're relaxing, studying with it in the background, or trying to get to sleep, I know you'll enjoy this movie. Oh, and if you haven't seen the previous Minecraft movies, you can watch them all here or on my channel homepage. But without further ado, here is 5,000 days in hardcore Minecraft. 1 million subscribers. That is insane. I honestly can't believe the lockdown army has grown this much. And now passing 1 million subscribers means YouTube are going to send me a shiny gold award. The only problem is it can sometimes take months to arrive and I definitely can't wait that long. So instead, I had the genius idea of building a massive 1 million subscriber gold award in my hardcore world. Meaning we need a crazy amount of gold. And we're starting with none. Great. Luckily for us, we have this really OP gold farm. So let's just smack one of these guys. And now all we have to do is sit here and passively collect thousands of gold. So now we're three hours into phase one of this project. Speaking of which, let's see how much we actually managed to get. Um... How is that all we got in three hours? That is a very big problem because it basically means this massive farm is useless. But thankfully, after some very intense research, I think I found a solution. We're going to build this gold farm by Dash Pump 4 that has to be the most OP gold farm I've ever seen. It's so powerful that it gives us over 1,000 gold blocks per hour. The only catch is we have a lot of items to collect. So I guess let's start with the easier blocks like four carpet. And then we'll move on to the harder blocks later. Now we need six of them glowing stone blocks. Ooh. And now for some reason, we need 22 boats. That's a lot of boats. Now we need a bunch of these green cubes to die. And now we can use a bunch of their balls to craft up some blocks. And then we can also layer the balls on top of pistons to get sticky pistons. All right, now I'm probably just going to go through my sorting system and tick off all the rest of the easy blocks. Now, if we just grab a couple more shulker boxes, we can move on to the medium tier items. First of all, this farm's going to collect so much gold that we need 65 chests per hour the farm's running. And I want to go AFK for overnight, so let's say 10 hours. Meaning we need a massive 650 chests. Luckily, we have this really overpowered wood farm. So if we just fill it up with a bone meal, then all I need to do is click this. Oh wait, we need a sapling. Let's go. All right, now all we need to do is click this and click here. Okay, and if we combine them with the chest we already had, we have a little over double what we need, which is perfect because we also need hoppers. So if we head over to spawn, we can use this beautiful iron farm to get not only all the hoppers we need, but also all the iron blocks we need. Perfect. And now seeing as it's night, we might as well use our really high tech string farm. And that's the string complete. Now this farm requires lots of wooden items like fences, but because we're building it in the nether, we need to build it out of nether wood so that the farm doesn't burn down. This stuff will do. There's the trap doors. Here's the fences. And finally, the wow. fence gates. Okay, and now it's finally time to move on to the harder blocks. We'll start with 17 honey. And the only hard thing about this is we need to travel all the way to the end to get to the honey farm. Hello, Mr. Bees. Thank you for the honey. Okay, so that's the easiest hard block done. Now they're going to get a lot harder. The next one is 4,000 building blocks. And in my head, this farm is made out of stone. So we're going to use this machine. Wow, this is exciting content. All right, that is the 4,000 stone we're going to need. Next up, we need 18 turtle eggs. And I think I know just where to get them. If I remember correctly, I think we have a turtle breeding station somewhere around here. There it is. Wow, it's so beautiful. Ooh, some free turtle eggs. Don't touch. Four down, 14 more to go. Is there any turtles left in here? No. All right, we've spotted the turtles. Now we need some of the seagrass. Cheers to the rescue. Oh my god, there's so many turtles. All right, now if I hold this in my hand, they should follow me. 
Nice. Come on, turtles. Follow me. And we'll make a little turtle hole. Make sure it's nice and comfortable for them. Come into the turtle hole. You know you want to. Yes. Turtle number two. Ooh. Perfect. Keep them coming. That's three turtles, but we can definitely do better than that. There's so many around here. Okay, now that we've got six turtles in the hole, it's time for a turtle breeding montage. Give me a turtle egg. Oh, he's making an egg. Yes. I just hit an egg. Yes. There's four more eggs. Why have these guys not made any eggs? Come on, guys. I need more eggs. Yes. <laughs> yes. Leave my turtles alone. They're trying to steal the eggs. More eggs. Only seven more eggs to go. Oh my God. They're going insane. Yes. I hit an egg. Two more eggs. Come on. You can do it. All right, we only need two more eggs. Yes! Oh my god, the last two turtle eggs. Can I have them? Yes. I'll leave you with one egg. And for our last material, the only thing we need is 10,000 of these blocks. Wait, that's going to take ages. Well, there's four. Now, after searching around online, I realized there's not really any shortcuts when it comes to getting this quantity of magma blocks. So I just had to jump into the nether and get grinding. Hours and hours went by, but eventually we had our 10,000 magma blocks. So now we have absolutely everything we're going to need to build this farm. But we can't just build it anywhere. It needs to be built on the nether roof above a nether wasteland biome. But the thing is, it can't be close to any of my portals because that will literally break the farm. So now let's try and find a wasteland biome. Oh, all right, this looks like a decent place. I don't see any of my portals around here. Now we just need to get onto the roof. Nice. But before we start building, I've noticed that it's quite dark. So let me turn the light on. Perfect. All right, now we can get building. So first we need like a nether portal cube. Now we need to build slightly taller nether portals going from here all the way up to there. And now we build the last portal, connect them up and put slabs on it so no pigmen can spawn on here. Now it's turtle egg time. So I think we do something like this and we place glass on here, then a turtle egg on top. Now time to repeat that 16 more times. Okay, now we need to surround the eggs with trap doors so that the pigmen can't destroy the eggs. And now we get to open them, so I'm gonna fall all the way down there. And of course, we need to do that on the rest of the sides. Okay, next we need to build the actual spawning platforms. So seven out and five on each side. Then we do this on every side. And now we connect these up with diagonal lines. And now we just fill it in. Wait, I know these magma blocks don't do much damage, but if we're gonna be doing this for all of these layers, then I think we need to find a solution. And because I'm an experienced Minecraft veteran, I know the solution. We need the Frostwalker enchant that will make it so we take no damage on magma blocks. Ooh, these diamond boots have Frostwalker too. Is that good enough? I guess there's only one way to find out. Yes, no damage. Oh, this is so good. But I'm on day 4,000, so diamond is definitely not going to be good enough. Why do I keep my netherite in a random chest? Oh, that's much better. And we'll also do my axe. All right, little lockdown life, let's build some spawning platforms. Let's do it. And that's the first shulker placed. We've got a long way to go. And that is shulker box number two. We're not even halfway and my finger is starting to hurt. I'm sure it'll be fine. There's shulker box number three. And shulker number four. Shulker number five. And with the last layer complete, it's time to move on to the glass bits. So, whilst I was building the layers, these guys had the amazing idea of dyeing the glass. And we're going to go with orange glass to fit the general aesthetic. So for this, we're going to need some bones from our wither skeleton farm. Now we'll just turn these bones into bone meal. Then we're going to need loads of red dye. And of course, loads of yellow dye. Because if you didn't know, red plus yellow equals orange. Nice. Okay, now our glass is orange. Let's place it so ghasts can't spawn up here. Now for some reason, we need to place string around this entire platform. Yeah, I've got no idea why it needs string, but I guess let's just 
do what it says. All right, now that we've got that, we can move on to the next stage of the build, which is actually linking the portal to the overworld. But if we get this wrong, it will break the entire farm. So we really need to make sure we get this right. Okay, so these are the cords. We need to light the portal and go through and find eight times these coordinates. So we just break this portal. Okay, now we're here at the right coordinate. So we need to tower up to Y equals 179. Okay, now we need to make a two wide and three tall nether portal. Leave me alone. Okay, now we light it and it should link to the one on the other side. Perfect. Now we build a soul sound platform on each side of this portal. And now to surround this with a massive wall. And I've just realized this entire thing is facing the wrong direction. Okay, now that everything's facing the right direction, we need to build this out two blocks this way. Then we need to add a too high wall on the back and sides. Place a bunch of temporary blocks here and here and some more here. Now we need water against this entire back wall. Why is it turning into ice? That's kind of not good. If this breaks the farm, I'm going to be so annoyed. Let's just ignore the ice for now and we break these. Ah, oh, the ice is so annoying. No. That's not meant to be like that. What is happening? Why is this turning into ice? Wait, if I add torches here, the ice shouldn't be able to form, I don't think. Maybe torches here? Yes, I think I fixed it. Now we can get rid of these. Place a temporary block there and then one there and the same on the other side. Now this needs to go. All right, now we're going to swim down here and we're going to use some of the bone meal we got earlier. We're going to place down some kelp. Not there. And there. And then we need to bone meal every single one. And I am drowning. Nice. And now we just need to do the same thing on the other side. Perfect. And now we can break all the kelp. If this works, we should be carried to the very top. Nice. It looks like it's working. All right. Now we need to go down here 15 blocks. Then we place a line of honey here. Next up, we need to build an 11 wide and three tall nether portal. Slime blocks here and a row of furnaces on top of it. All right. Now we're adding the part that's going to push the piglins into the portal. So piston and a comparator. Then one hopper here. And one hopper here. And we can add one random block into this. And now this is running and it will push all the piglins into the portal. Okay, now all this water is getting quite annoying. So let's add some blocks here and use our fence gates. Bruh. Okay, now once this water's gone, we can light the nether portal. And now it's time to build another giant wall. Okay, now we've got a drop shoot. We can add a roof to this. Nice. We can move on to the killing chamber where hundreds of thousands of pigmen are going to die so that I can get their gold. Okay, this is probably the most complicated part of the build, so we need to make sure we get it right. We need to break this so we don't get any pigmen going through before the farm's finished. Okay, now we need to go one, two, three, four, five out and break a four by two hole like this. Now we're building a glass tube up to Y level 250. Now we need to build a fat bottomed nether portal, which looks like that. All right, this should connect to the big overworld portal. Nice. Now we need to build out 32 blocks. 31, 32. And build yet another nether portal. We need to go through here, go two blocks this way, and build yet another nether portal. Thank God we mined all the end pillars. All right, now let's just check that they're all linked up correctly. Okay, this one's right. And this one's right. Okay, now we add some fences here and here then some walls now we need to head through this portal and come over here and break this portal yeah not gonna lie this is kind of hurting my brain now and now for some reason we need to build a system that dispenses boats what is going on yeah this part was a bit confusing but it turns out all i needed to do was build this machine and then flick this lever a bunch of times and light the portal and the boats are gone okay now we're back here and we need to break this side of the portal What's the point in building all these portals if I'm just going to break them? Right, now we just need to, like, push the boat around a couple of times. Yay, the boats are in the hole. Why is that important again? Well, Lockdown Life, I'm glad you asked. There's something called a mob cap, which basically means the amount of mobs that can exist at one time. So in order to make sure this farm is really fast and produces the maximum amount of mobs, we need to make sure the mob cap is never reached. And one way to do this is with boats, because when mobs get into boats, they don't count towards the mob cap, which means we'll be able to kill more piglins at the same time and in return, get much more gold. All right, thanks, voice in my head. Anyways, we can now 
now break this bottom boat. Then we can break this and repair the portal. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing again with the boats, but on the other side. And now these boats are too hot, so let's cool them down. And this portal's too tall, so let's lower the base and chop off its head. Perfect. Now we'll place glass on the top of here because we don't want anything to spawn. And we can finally get rid of this portal and get rid of the boat dispensing machine. And now we put glass at the back of this portal. Then we place four trap doors like this. One, two, three fences and a turtle egg on here. Okay, this next bit's going to be quite fun. We place an armor stand here. Wait, why did the turtle egg break? BLB. Okay, let's try that again. Nice. And then we can just place the turtle egg. Here we'll go slab, sand, cactus. We'll surround this area with a bit of glass. Now we can add some trapdoors here. And our killing chamber is complete. So now the farm is pretty much completely functional. But if we switched it on, the gold wouldn't be collected anywhere. So we need to build a massive storage system that can hold thousands of gold. The collection system is going to start here underneath the boat. Four glass directly under here. And then two more layers of glass over here. Then we extend this down by one block. Now we place sticky pistons here and then carpet in front. Okay, now we place some blocks here, some repeaters going into the pistons, and then some redstone here. And now we break seven random pieces of glass. Nice. Fill this in with some blocks, add a lever here, then beep, boop, beep, boop, boop, beep. Boop. And this is our on and off switch for our sorting system. Oh wait, we need to connect it. Perfect. Now we need some redstone stuff over here. Now I'm going to make a square out of four different types of blocks. Then we'll make sure this honey is nice and lit. And now we're going to cover this all in glass so that no blocks escape. And then I continue to wire the redstone for the rest of the sorting system. Okay, now we're going to build the sorting system that will separate the gold nuggets from the gold ingots. So first we need a line of hoppers going straight into the ice. Then two hoppers going into each one of the chests. All right, this is the important redstone part. Okay, that's the redstone. Now we just need to add the actual physical filters. So we add some gold ingots there, there, and there. And then all the rest is gold nuggets. Okay, nice. They're all stopped at 41, which means they are working. Okay, now we're going to add the place where all of the gold swords are going to go to get burned. Nice. Let's just check it works. Okay, this farm is now really close to being complete. We just have a few finishing touches to do, like getting rid of all of the temporary blocks, placing in all of the chests and hoppers we're going to need, making ourselves a beacon so we don't starve to death, and finally lighting every single portal in the farm. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's turn this on. Head up here. And now I just turn the auto clicker on. And hopefully in 10 hours, we should have all the gold we need. Okay, it's been 10 hours and we now have over a million gold nuggets and also tens of thousands of gold ingots. All we need to do now is go through the painstaking process of converting nuggets into gold blocks. And I think this is going to take at least a couple of hours. So let's get to work. All right, I finished crafting and we now have just over 10 full shulker boxes of gold blocks, which is nearly 17,000 blocks of gold. So I think it's fair to say that phase one is complete and it's time to move on to phase two, which is planning the build. We need to find a good location for the build and work out the size and proportions of the build. It needs to be in a place where you can clearly see how big it is. So there needs to be stuff like trees or maybe a village around. And I definitely prefer a green biome. Ooh, this village could be a good way to show scale. What if we built it just behind the village so you'll be able to see just how big it's actually going to be? Although it would be nice if this was a bit more flat. Okay, this shovel's pretty good, but I think for the rest of this, we're going to use a bit more of an explosive shovel. And yes, I renamed a bunch of TNT to explosive shovel. 
And after cleaning up the area, I got rid of some of the ugly grass and planted a bunch of saplings for scale. And just like that, we have our location. Now we need to work out how big this thing is actually gonna be. But before we do that, it's important we found out the proportions of the YouTube Gold Award. That way we can make it as accurate as possible. Now I thought this part was gonna be as easy as just googling the size of the YouTube Gold Award. So I tried it and nothing useful came up. It just said we needed to reach 1 million subscribers to get the play button, which I already knew. So I tried swapping around the words and searching for the actual dimensions of the play button, but it just kept on coming up with more useless information. And once I thought I found the dimensions, I realized these were for the silver play button. It got to the point where I had spent hours searching and I was still no closer to the answer, which is when I realized I needed to think outside of the box. So at first I tried messaging YouTube support, but they weren't very helpful. And then I thought if I could find someone who had a YouTube gold award, I could ask them to measure it and then find out the exact dimensions from them. The only problem is only about 30,000 people in the entire world have a YouTube gold award. But luckily, I had one of them added on Discord. So I spoke to SB on Discord and asked him if he wouldn't mind sharing the dimensions of his YouTube gold award. And thankfully, only a few minutes later, he responded with the exact centimeter proportions. So thank you so much, SB. So now we can use these proportions to work out the exact size of the build, which is actually going to be 160 blocks tall and 132 blocks wide. Wow. Which means if we time them both together, we get the amount of gold blocks we need. 21,120. We need 4,000 more gold blocks, which will only take about 3 hours with this farm, but it would have taken the other farm over 30 hours. This farm is so good. Okay, so now that we've got all the gold, it's time to move on to phase 3. Actually building the giant YouTube gold award. This is gonna take a while. First block down, over 20,000 more to go. And my finger is still kind of hurting from building that farm. This is not gonna do it any good. 130, 131, 132. All right, that is the first layer complete. Now we just need to do that 159 more times. Oh, we better get grinding. Two layers at a time is gonna be faster. But do you know what's even faster than placing two blocks at a time? placing three blocks at a time. Although this does require me to click really, really fast. Uh, I'm sure that won't be a problem. Oh, my forearm is actually really hurting. This is painful. Right, I only have to do this for about two more hours. All right, yeah, no, I can't do this. My forearm is literally on fire right now. Yeah, so at this point, I had to go back to the drawing board because it literally is not feasible to click for that long. I was thinking that I could spread out the building over a couple of days to give my forearm a chance to recover, but I don't actually have too much time left to finish this video. But then I remembered we have the auto clicker that we use for the farm. If we could somehow set this up in a way where it places blocks instead of attacking pigmen, then we should be able to do this a lot faster. So I spent some time figuring it out, and now I think I finally got it to work. Okay, I'm literally not touching my mouse and this is working perfectly. It's a tiny bit slower, but at least my forearms can rest easy. Now let's make some progress. All right, it's been about an hour and as you can see, we've made a lot of progress. But this now presents a new problem because on the award, there's this middle reflective part that's different to everywhere else. But I wasn't sure where to put it on the actual build. So I came up with the genius idea of putting a picture into Photoshop and just measuring the dimensions from there. I also used a creative world to test out the material that we're gonna build the middle part out of because it's reflective like a mirror and there's no mirror blocks in Minecraft. And in my opinion, black glass seemed to look the best. And I've used some genius math to work out that we need 3,456 black glass. Meaning a lot of these guys are about to die. This brightness setting makes it so easy to see the squids. There's literally nowhere they can hide. All right, that's all the black dye we're gonna need. And for the glass, we can use our sand duper. And now our spaceship will generate us all the sand we need. Now that we've got the sand, and head over to our asteroid and get all the glass we need. And now that we've got our glass, we'll convert it into black stained glass. So now let's get back to building. We're making some good progress, but we need to turn this rectangle bit into more of a rounded rectangle. This is gonna be kind of difficult because Minecraft is made out of squares. I'm trying to make the curve as smooth as possible, but I don't know if I'm doing this right. Two, three, four, five, and then 
If we do that. Ooh, okay. That's actually quite a smooth curve. What would that look like on all sides? That is one smooth rectangle. Now let's just quickly finish off the top. So it's time to add the black glass. And I've got my calculations completely wrong, and it's the complete wrong shape. Great. Okay, and now all we need to do is use our genius calculations to add the play button to there. Thank you guys so much, and here is the 1 million subscriber gold award in Minecraft. This is my working end portal, but it's actually an illusion. So today we're gonna recreate this effect, but with a nether portal instead. And by the end of the video, we'll be able to hop through this portal into the nether. To make this happen, we need to transform three areas, the river, land, and even the sky. And I think we're gonna start with the river because last I checked, there wasn't water in the nether. Well, at least not without YouTubers. So phase one is transforming the river. But first we need to get rid of all this water Water. And for that, we need sponges. Okay, we've got everything and we're here. First, we need to kill the three Elder Guardians so that we can get the sponges. Yes, the sponges here. Uh, if we start mining them, maybe we can get them before the Elder Guardian gets us. All right, that's all them, but there's got to be some more in here. No. Okay, yeah, we need to kill the guardians. All right, here's guardian number one. Yes. Wait, we can drink our potions. There we go. Now we don't have to place doors. Oh, yes, more sponges. Oh, it's still so slow. Yeah, the other two guardians definitely need to die. Here's the second one. Too easy. But where is number three? I think the last one might be at the very top of the monument. I guess there's only one way to check. Bruh, this is taking so long. No, oh my god, don't hit me off the block now. Yes! We are free! That took so long. Alright, is he at the very top? Yes, he is. But how do I get in there? Round two. Yes, we can finally kill you. You're so annoying. Oh my god, oh my god. Why does it actually hurt? Okay, now you're dead. Woo! We are free to collect sponges in 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Yay. Yes! Okay, so that's like a stack of sponges, but we're going to need a little bit more than that. All right, and now that we've got sponges, we can build walls of sand like this. Oh my god, these fish are like right on the line. <laughs> they are about to lose their home. Placing the sand is definitely what takes the longest. I wonder if there's a faster way. We just need to put this here. And now... Wow, this is working so good. Ow. So I think we'll use this setup for the rest of these lines. Like this, and that, and... All right, I think it stopped working because this piston can't push that many blocks. So to fix it, we'll just move it down there. And we'll just repeat this process for the rest of the river. And now that we've got all these areas separated, it's time to get using our sponges. Sorry, fish, but um, you are going to die. <laughs> Lol. All right, that area is all drained, but this area is very deep and a bit of an awkward shape. So I think we're going to have to drain it a different way. Wait, I think I've got an idea. We're going to need a bunch wow. of dirt. And now we just make a layer of dirt one block underneath the water. Okay, and this will be the cutoff point because you can't see this area from the portal. Now we'll just collect our sponges. Dry them off in the nether, and now it should be quite simple to drain all this water. 
All right, and now the river is completely drained. It's time to start filling it up with lava. But before we do that, we need to make all these layers one layer deep, like this area. Let me just cast my magic spell. Subscribe to Lockdown Life. Nice. I can't wow. believe that worked. Now it's time to add the lava, and I think the lava is really going to bring this illusion to life. So let's go and get some. Okay, the first buckets of lava are going down. I think we're going to need a lot more. <laughs> yeah, that's the first batch down, and we're going to need a lot more. So for this, we're going to make use of the resources that we've got available, such as having thousands of shulker boxes and all the iron we could ever need. All right, now we should really be able to maximize efficiency and get this lava placed down. so annoying. If only there was some magical item that would make this so much easier. Wait a second. Perfect. This is going to be so much easier. All right, the lava river is now complete. So this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like now. But we've still got a lot more to do, so let's move on to phase two, transforming all this land. And the first thing we need to do is get rid of all these trees because I don't think there's any jungle trees in the nether. Wait a second, I think there's a faster way of doing this. Ow. <laughs> let's try and not set myself on fire. Yes. Burn everything, burn! I guess whilst everything's burning, let's plan out the areas for this build. So I was thinking to the left of the portal, we'll have the warped forest. And then here at the back where the bamboo is, we'll have the basalt delta biome. And then next to that, we'll have the nether wasteland biome with maybe a nether fortress in it. Then next is the soul sand valley, which will look really cool with all the bone blocks. And finally, we'll have a small crimson forest biome just to the right of the portal. All right, now that we've got our plan, let's get to work. We're going to start with the warped forest biome, but the only problem is we need to find it first. Ooh, wow. this might come in handy later. Yes, perfect. All right, there's a few important things we need. Firstly, we're going to need a bunch of this stuff, and this is literally going to cover the entire area and just make it look exactly like this biome. Okay, that should be good for now. Another thing is these vines. They're quite a distinctive feature of this biome. Um... Do you guys mind? And of course, we need a bunch of these trees, but we can use the mushrooms and just bone meal them into the trees later. All right, that should be good. And now we've somehow got to make this area look like the nether. Okay, so let's first start by extending this bit a little bit out into the lava, just so you can actually see this from the portal a bit more. And then we'll go along the edge and convert all this first. How does that look? Hmm, it looks okay. Maybe we'll extend this bit like this a bit. This bit can be a bit more hilly because it's not really in the way of the rest of the build. And then we can just cover all this hill with Nicelium. We don't need to replace the blocks. We can just cover it. Wait, that's a thought actually. If we look through the portal, where do we actually need to convert and where can we actually leave? So like all that bit, you Bruh. can't even see through the portal. Hmm. So at this point, I came up with the idea to look at this screenshot and then map out the area that you can actually see through the portal. All right, this is the area that we need to transform. And this little segment is going to be the warped forest. So let's put down all the Nicelium. Okay, now we're going to scatter some of these mushrooms around. And I want one right here at the front. Then we can bone meal them. And this one's important because we need it to look good. We can also add a bit more realism to the biome by just bone meal in the floor. And finally, we'll add some of these vines. Hmm, I feel like that tree's blocking everything, so let's try and move it to the side a bit. Ow, did not mean to fly into lava. Thank God we've got the Streamlight Destroyer 4000. Maybe here? What is that? Bruh. All right, let's try... Tree number three. Yeah, it's a tiny bit too tall. Tree number four, please. Uh, maybe here. You know what? 
I'm just gonna build my own tree. I mean, at least we've got all the stuff to build a tree now. All right, that's the first out of the five biomes complete. Now we're moving on to the next biome, which is the Basalt Delta biome. And luckily there is one right here. Ow, how did that set me on fire? And why is there a parrot in the nether? <laughs> I must get a seed. You will be mine, parrot. Come back here. That is very dangerous. That is a very dangerous place to fly. Oh my god. He would rather die than be my parrot. <sighs> oh! Oh my god. Why is everything being so mean to me? Oh! Let's just collect the biome. Oh, these things take like a little bit to mine. Oh, it's gonna take ages. Wait, I've got an idea. Here we are. And we have a bunch of leftover gold blocks. Then we can grab a beacon from here. And... How did I miss that? Wait a second. Oh, there's blocks in the way of the beacon. Oh my god. And there we go. We have ourselves a haste 2 beacon. Now let's finally collect this biome. And I think we're going to build it over here because the basalt pillars are kind of like the nether's bamboo. I mean, sort of, right? Anyway, let's build this thing. We'll start here with some taller spires. Actually, if we make them tall enough, you won't be able to see all that land back there, which will then save us a bunch of time. I think rather than building one pillar at a time, we're going to build the foundations of loads of them. And that way we won't have to take loads of full damage. Okay, and now we'll build this back layer up. All right, that's the back layer done. And as you can see, it completely covers all the background. Although we do need to get rid of this bamboo back here. And we should also probably flatten this hill a bit. All right, that's looking good. Now let's build the rest of the spires. Okay, it's looking pretty good, but it could look better with some lava. We need to make sure we get rid of all of the dirt because there is no dirt in the nether. Lava should help cover it up there. Do -do -do -do. Ow, ow, why do I keep burning myself? All right, it's looking a lot more alive. Now let's finish off the biome with some blackstone and magma blocks. And that is the second biome complete. Now onto the nether wastelands biome. So first, we're going to place a blanket of netherrack on this entire area. This would be a lot easier without mobs. And also a lot easier without all this grass. No, no, no! Oh my god, no! Oh my god. God. Well, there goes three minutes of my life. Alright, that's all fixed and all the grass is gone. Let's get back to Operation Netherrack Blanket. And there we go, Operation Netherrack Blanket is complete. Now it's time to add some details, like blocks of quartz and gold. And finally, fire. This is definitely going to add that nethery feel. And with the final touch of some flowing lava, that is the nether wastelands biome complete. Only two more to go now and the next one is the soul sand valley. This illusion is actually looking so cool. So we need to collect some soul sand and some soul soil. And then of course we're also going to need a bunch of bone blocks. Now let's just quickly lay down the outline for the biome. And now we just fill in this middle area. Then we'll add our bones. Very nice. And now we'll finish the biome off with a sprinkling of these little red bushes that no one cares about. And just like that, we've only got one biome left to do. The Crimson Forest. I mean, to be honest, this biome only has a slither of land in the illusion. So we're not going to need to collect too many blocks. So just a bit of this stuff. A couple of mushrooms and some vines. Okay, so we just replace all this green grass with this nice red nether grass. All right, and now we decorate the place. And carefully add a couple of trees. We can't put any here because it would block the entire illusion. So maybe let's try here. 
Hmm, it kind of blocks all the bones. I don't really like that. What if we had a tree like here? Hmm, maybe. Or we could try one a bit further away and have it look smaller. What is that tree? That is so weird. I really want to try and get the vines in somewhere, but this stuff is kind of blocking the entire illusion at the moment. Make this tree a bit smaller and then we can place some vines here. What does that look like? Hmm, now you can't see it. I think we might have to build our own tree like that one over there. And just like that, all five biomes are complete. But before we move on to phase three, I kind of feel like it's missing something. I can't quite put my finger on it, so let's look in the nether and see if we've missed anything. Ah, right. Structures. Ooh. And I think we'll start with the ruined nether portal. Okay, we've already got this overworld ruined portal, but we need to convert it into a nether ruined portal. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to swap out all of this regular stone brick and mossy stone brick for black stone. And of course, we should probably get rid of these vines. And to be honest, we'll get rid of this obsidian as well. Now I'm just going to use this screenshot to recreate the one that I saw in the nether. Yeah, that's a lot more nethery. And of course, the final touches, we can put all this gold stuff in this chest. I don't know why this matters, but let's just do it. Now let's move on to the major structure. And for this, we're going to need our beacon. And here we are, the nether fortress. Now we can just build our beacon here. And hopefully this will work down below. It's working here. No, it looks like it's just a bit too low. Let's just do it the old fashioned way. All right, now that we've got the materials, I think we'll build it on top of that netherrack hill. And we're basically going to build one of those nether fortress bridges. I think that'll work really well with this hill, and it'll look really cool in the illusion. So let's get to work. All right, this is where it starts to get a little bit difficult because we are doing that part where the nether fortress bridge goes out a bit and we just need to make sure we don't get this bit wrong. Otherwise, it's going to mess up the entire build. I am using a screenshot and also my amazing diagram to help me do this right. So I don't think there's much of a chance I get it wrong. Okay, the shape looks right, but it's missing the netherrack brick fences, and that's why it looks a little weird. Once again, we'll use our amazing diagram to make sure we know where the fences are. Okay, the fences are in the right place, but we need to make sure you can't see through it. So let's add some netherite brick behind each fence. And there we go. We have a perfect nether fortress bridge. Now we just need to make it a lot bigger. Thankfully, I've still got my trusty diagram. Right, and with that done, I'm pretty happy with the structures in this illusion. But this magma cube has given me an idea. Why don't we get mobs and put them in their respective biomes to really sell this illusion and make it seem like you're actually looking into the nether. Which means the mobs are going to need names so they don't despawn. And I'm going to name them after the most active members of my community discord. So if you want a chance to be in my world, then don't forget to join the discord with the link down below. All right, so we've got 15 different name tags. Let's try and get 15 mobs. Okay, we've got this magma cube. Uh, come with me. Go on, parkour. He's coming. No, this way. Yes, I think he went through. And we'll call this first one Linus. Hmm, we need to make sure the mobs don't escape from this area. So let's maybe build like a barrier going all the way around. Just get inside first, please. Yes. All right, he's in. Let's build this barrier. Okay, this guy is now nice and trapped. Next, I want to try and get some of these guys. So let's build a nether portal here and then we just light it. But we need to be able to move these guys. And for that, we need one of them mushrooms. Perfect. Then we can craft this. Nice. And now if we put a saddle on these guys, oh, we can control them. No, skeleton. Don't shoot me. So annoying. Come on, go through the portal. Why are you not going through? Why is this portal so low? Diamonds, though. Wait, actually, let's just drive over to this portal. Now, go through the portal. Perfect. Get rid of these. You will be Naman. Enjoy the lava. Now, let's get a few more of those guys. All right, that's all our striders in the lava lake. Now, let's try and get some zombified pigmen for this biome. Wait a second. You're not a nether mob. So for this, I guess we'll make another nether portal here. That is not how you make a nether portal. Hmm, this guy could do. We just get him to follow us. Yes, he's actually coming. Come on, come into the portal. Yes, come on, follow me. 
Nice, come on. Go through the portal. Nice. And you are called Mallow. And with a few more of these guys, the land has been completely transformed. So that is phase two complete. The only thing that tells us we're not in the nether is the sky. So that's what we're going to transform in phase three. My plan for this is to convert the sky into a red color by putting a layer of red stained glass in front of the sky. But for this to work, we're going to need a hell of a lot of glass and I know just where to get it. This is my super smelting asteroid and it can literally smelt thousands of blocks an hour. The only problem is we don't have much fuel left. Well, we have zero. Wait a second, I think I've got an idea. We might be able to use wood logs as a fuel. Or better yet, we'll be able to use the asteroid to smelt the wood into charcoal. And then we can use that charcoal to smelt all the glass we need. So that's the plan and the first step is to get lots of wood. Okay, we've got the wood. Let's load it into the super smelter. We need some of it to actually power the furnaces. And then all the rest can get smelted into charcoal. All right, now if I press these levers, we should start to get loads of charcoal. Okay, and now we're starting to get charcoal. We can use this charcoal to actually power the machine. Okay, now loads and loads of charcoal is being produced. And the entire thing is running on charcoal as well. So we can go and get some sand from our duper. And now we can load up the super smelter. Then after a little bit of waiting, we have loads of glass. But we're still not done because we don't need clear glass. We need red glass. And I just wasted two glass. So for this, let's click this red plant loads Transform it into red dye and dye all of this glass. Right, perfect. That's all the red stained glass we need. Now it's just figuring out where to actually build it. Well, I guess we know we need to build it behind this nether fortress, but do we build it just behind it or a little further back? I think this is a decent enough gap. Where does the illusion actually start though? Okay, so it starts about there. So if we build out to here and then build a line all the way across. It's just figuring out where we actually stop. Okay, so we definitely need to go lower than that, but I think the length is pretty much good. Okay, and I'm pretty sure that is about high enough. So I guess all that's left to do now is to get building. Okay, that's the part under the bridge done and it looks really cool. Now we're gonna do this part just above the basalt. I think this will be easiest if we just do a solid block instead of just trying to pick out the little bits that are missing. It looks like this from the back, but it looks amazing from the front. Last bit is this massive sky segment. This is going to take a while. Luckily, I have loads of experience with this kind of building from last episode. All right, phase three is now complete. I have transformed the sky, which means the illusion is complete. So this is what it looked like at the start, and this is what it looks like now. This is my brain and inside it, there is no video ideas. So I asked you guys for your ideas and some of them were pretty good, but also some of them were very stupid. For example, Sniffy11 says, build a big potato. Okay. Okay, this is my giant potato and it's even got a potato farm inside it. Wait a second, it's actually pretty cool. So let's build some more of your stupid ideas. And at the end of the video, I'll choose my favorite idea and they'll win $100 and a custom rank on my Discord server. Okay, so Adil Khan says make a wireless teleporter. I think we can do that. So for this, we're going to need some water, some kelp. Any type of trapdoor, some ender pearls, and most importantly, a daylight sensor. So to build it, we just dig a hole, put some water at the top, place a bunch of kelp, trapdoor, that is wrong, like that, and a daylight sensor. Then we just put a pearl in here, and we forgot about the soul sand. Now we just throw the pearl, then when it goes night, we should be instantly teleported over there. Let's go. Oh my God, there is a creeper. Well, at least it works. But what happens if you don't want to wait until it's nighttime? Well, don't worry because I've wow. got a solution to that too. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the target block. So if we come up here, we should easily be able to teleport down there. 
Let's go! First try! Anyways, this next comment might be a contender for best comment because Kimberly says to build a big capybara. And here's some pictures of capybaras if you don't know what they look like. They're basically the coolest animals to walk the earth. And now, thanks to Kimberly, we get to build it in Minecraft. Alright, and to build it, we're gonna need some brown terracotta and also some light grey terracotta. And whilst I was mining up all this terracotta, I was reading through some of your comments and I actually can't wait to build some of your suggestions. All right, this should be a nice spot for our capybara. Okay, and whilst I build this capybara, it's time for some capybara facts. Did you know a capybara was once spotted using an alligator for a mode of transport? All right, that's the brown part of his legs. Okay, now we move on to this color. Oh, and did you know that the capybara has its own theme song? Let me go out one for his body. Oh, and a capybara was once seen taking on an entire pride of lions and killing them all. Okay, so that's how tall it's going to be. Okay, yeah, I was lying about that last one, but capybaras are really cool. Capybara, 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 capybara. And now time for the head. And our capybara is complete. Capybara. Capybara, 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 capybara. Wow, that was actually a really good build suggestion. I wonder what the next one is. Okay, so player two says, how long does it take to grow a strawberry? It's not even a build. What the... Okay, so Jonah says to build Among Us, and Hansel says to build a sus build. So actually, we can take off both of them at the same time. All we need is some red and black concrete powder. Then we just click these switches, head through here, and convert all this concrete powder into concrete. I hope this classifies as a sus build. I mean, I don't think you can get anything more sus than a red Among Us player. And for those of you who don't know what Among Us is, it's basically this game where you have to vote out the imposter. And it's the imposter's job to go around the spaceship and kill as many crewmates as possible. Oh yeah, this is looking really sus already. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, red is definitely the most sus Among Us color. All right, and here's his sus little backpack. Then across here is where his goggles will go. Fill all this bit in with red, then fill in his goggles. And there we go. That is something very sus. So the next comment is from Dryest Apollo, and he says, build a netherite beacon. Yeah, this might be the dumbest comment so far, but let me explain why. You see, for a netherite beacon, you need 164 blocks of netherite. But when you take into account that that's 1,476 netherite ingots, and to get them, you need 5,904 ancient debris and also 594 gold ingots. Now hopefully you can see just how dumb this is, but let's give it a try. Okay, so to have any chance of this, we need TNT and we need lots of it. So let's grab all the sand we've got and let's combine it with the thousands of gunpowder from our creeper farm. Okay, so we've now got three shulkers of TNT, but we need to find a good place to mine for ancient debris. Okay, this warped forest biome looks good. Now let's dig down to Y level 15. Perfect. Okay, now we're going to press F3 and G so we can see the chunk borders. Alright, and we want to mine it in a straight line along these chunk borders. Okay, now it's time to start placing our TNT and we'll place it in a nice little pattern like this for the optimum explosion. All of this to try and get ourselves a netherite beacon. This is definitely a dumb idea. Okay, here we are. We have nowhere to run. Let's light this TNT. Come on, ancient debris. None so far. Oh, yes. Let's go. Oh, we missed some up here as well. Yoink. Yes. What are the chances of that? Give me netherite. Oh, thanks. Give me more netherite. Not lava. TNT. Come on. Yes. How is there lava everywhere? Ow! Oh my god! How is there more lava there? Ooh, I'll take this. I swear to god if there's lava. <sighs> literally couldn't make it up. Ah, oh, more lava! Alright, I'll give up. We've literally only managed to get 23 ancient debris. Alright, I guess we're just gonna have to come back to this comment later. So, Penguin Otto wants me to build a giant tree. I think I've got an idea that will make this one a lot easier. Step one, simply chop down a giant tree. Step two, wait a second.
Step three, collect the saplings. And finally, step four, plant the saplings and bane meal them. Oh wait, that tree's not really giant. Hold on. Okay, let's try this again. And giant tree. There we go. That's more like it. Also, whilst I was waiting, these chickens laid four eggs. So as I said in the intro, my favorite comment wins $100. But I'll double it to $200 if one of these eggs turns into a chicken. Here we go. And I have to double it. Great. And speaking of the prize, these guys might be winning it. Because Ethan says to build a super large toilet. And Alex says to build a poo with a toilet in it. All right, yeah, these are definitely some of the weirdest slash dumbest comments so far. But that's why they might be my favorite. So for this, we're going to need a bunch of white concrete, some water for the toilet water, and a nice location to build it. Ooh, a capybara. That's nice. Um, I guess we'll build it here. Oh my god, this is gonna be such a weird build. Let's get some space, because this is gonna be a super large toilet. So first, we're gonna build the toilet. Okay, so we'll start with a big base. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll build this up a bit. Right, come on. Now we'll start making it a bit wider. Yeah, this is looking good. And another layer wider. And this bit will actually be the seat, so we can make it even wider. And at the back, we can have a big wall. I think this is what a toilet looks like. All right, now we can add our toilet water. Can it? Oh no, I just got rid of my water source. I kind of want to fill all this area up with water. Then we can break the parts that we're missing again. All right, and that's our toilet water. Then we can add the lid on here. Then if we make use of some slabs, we can build ourselves a nice handle. Wow, that actually looks really good, but we should probably move it across one more. Perfect. And now I want to make that handle actually work. It doesn't say to in the comments, but I think it'll be cool. So for this, we'll need some dispensers, which we will place here and here. We need to place a real button on this flusher. And then we need to use redstone torches to rig this up with the dispensers. So, when we press the button, does that torch go off? No. Like that. Yes. Then we'll add redstone dust on here. So this is me trying to wire up the toilet so it will actually flush. And I finally got it to work. Now we just need to fix the back of this toilet. Oh my god, what have I done to it? <laughs> so I managed to make the back of the toilet look half decent, and now it's time to do the poo. Alright, and for this, we'll use the brown terracotta we've got left over from building the capybara. Why does he look like he's kind of watching me? <laughs> Anyways, it's poo time. How are we going to make this big enough? I kind of like this idea because it's like the opposite of what you'd expect. Because to be honest, you'd expect the poo to be in the toilet, not the other way around. <laughs> Oh, it works so well. Okay, so we've now got our poo and we've also got our toilet inside. Yeah, this is definitely the weirdest idea so far. But this next idea is definitely going to have to be one of the fastest. Because right now my editor is editing some footage, but he's about to run out. So we need to get this section to him as soon as possible. And NatoCraft says, make a lockdown life statue with gold blocks. All right, we can do this. We just need to be fast. Come on, nether portal, load. All right, we need to fly over to our gold farm to get all the gold. All right, come on. Die, pigs, die. Come on. I think we've nearly got enough. Let's go check. No, that's not going to be enough. Oh my God. Quick. All right, we're going to have to AFK here for about five minutes. All right, we now should definitely have enough gold. So let's get crafting it and making this statue as fast as possible. All right, craft gold. Gold blocks. Yes. Oh my God, I can mine. All right. Uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, go across. Connect all these up. All right, now we can build the middle section out of gold. All right, this way will be my face. Will it? No, the other way will be my face. Build these sides up. Here's the top of my head. Wait, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, I've made it the wrong size. Oh, this is going to add on so much time. How could I get my own head size wrong? Okay, and this bit will be my mouth. And then up here. My eyes. Okay, and stop the timer. We're done. That is a gold statue of me. And whilst I'm getting this footage to my editor, let's do the next idea. And this might be the dumbest idea for me to build because Minecraft Boy says to build my house in real life. Yeah, not gonna lie, I'm kind of worried that you guys could work out where I live from this, but let's do it anyway. I am about to move into a house, but right now I'm still living at my childhood home, so we'll just build that. And for it, we're gonna need lots of clay to make lots of bricks. I actually don't think I've ever crafted bricks in Minecraft. 
or at least not for a while. Okay, so I found out that we need to get clay balls from these clay blocks, but my shovel is silk touch, so we don't get the balls. So if we chuck mending onto this Fortune 3 shovel, we can now mine these blocks and get the balls. And we're gonna have to do this a lot of times. Right, put some furnaces, add some charcoal, come on, get the clay, come on, yes, and we are making bricks. All right, so all the bricks are finished, and we have crafted them up. I think we'll build it somewhere around here. Yeah, maybe here, but it needs to be a little bit more flat. Perfect, now we'll start with the floor plan. All right, so this is the floor plan. Now let's get in decorating the rooms. All right, this is the entrance hall and it's got wooden floors. Then in the lounge is also wooden floors. Here is the front window of the house and here's the couch and one more here. Then we've got our TV here. This room here is like the dining room and this big room here is the kitchen. These are the worktops. The floor in here is actually some sort of stone thing, I think. So I guess we'll just leave it as stone. And this room over here is where the fridge is. Well, that's not very good fridge. Nice. Okay, now we just decorate the rest and then we'll go upstairs. Come on, lots of brick. There is no grass inside the house. Over here is actually like a conservatory, so it's all made out of glass. Okay, this is the layout upstairs and actually everywhere upstairs has carpet. So it's not this color, but I guess it'll do. All right, and now we'll do the bedrooms. So this one is my mom's room. Uh, I don't think she has a bed like that, but it'll do. <laughs> this room over here is Gamer's bedroom, and it's where he made all the videos on his channel. And this one here is my bedroom, the birthplace of this channel, and exactly where I'm making this video right now. Please don't find me. And now all it's missing is a roof. So let me just use my setup to read the next comment. Giga says, ask AI how to build a cow eating a potato and tomato. Okay. Wow, it actually has a response for that. Okay, step one, it says, the cow is gonna be the biggest part of your sculpture. Minecraft cows are typically six blocks long and three blocks wide and 3.5 blocks tall. All right, but what am I actually gonna need? Apparently it says I need mostly white and black wool or concrete for the cow's body. Okay, I think we should have this in here. All right, I've got the materials, but what do I actually do with them? First, lay out the base of the cow with white and black blocks. All right, what's next? Build up the sides and back of the cow, keeping the same pattern. Is the side of the cow? Building a massive cow because a comment told me to use AI to build a cow in Minecraft. Pretty normal thing to do. All right, that's done. What's next? For the head, give it a more rectangular shape and add a pair of ears using the same material. Okay. It didn't say where to put the head, so I guess we'll just put it where we would think. I'm going to give it quite a fat head so we can fit the mouth on it. All right, apparently we're meant to use item frames for eyes like this. Oh, he only has one eye. There we go. Wow, they are beautiful eyes. Now it says, make an open mouth with pink wool where you'll place the food later. Okay, how are we going to make an open mouth out of this? Oh my god, this is going to look so cursed. It's okay though, because AI says to do this. All right, we'll use pink concrete inside. Yeah, this is definitely going to be one of the dumbest things so far. All right, I'd say it's looking pretty good. Uh, let's add a potato. For the potato, you can use brown wool or concrete. Place the potato in the cow's mouth and make it look like it's half eaten by removing some of the blocks. Okay. All right, here's the potato. I don't know how we're going to make it detailed by fitting it in here. Okay, and it says to remove some of the blocks to make it look half eaten. So I guess we'll just get rid of this one. Wow, what an amazing potato. But it's not done because we got to build a tomato as well. A tomato can be represented by red wool or concrete. Place the tomato next to the potato in the cow's mouth. And finally, it says we can add detail by scattering some crumbs around, which can be represented by small bits of potato and tomato. Okay, I don't really know how to do smaller than one block, but I guess we can just... And there we go. We have a cow eating a tomato and potato. This could maybe win the prize because it's definitely Definitely one of my favorite comments so far. I mean, look how cursed it is. <laughs> Wait a second, I just got a terrifying message. My editor just said that he's flying to the UK tomorrow, so I need to get the rest of this video to him as fast as possible. Otherwise, this video won't come out for a while. So quick, let's do the next comment. Gamebro says, build a machine that detonates itself after use. Okay, we can do that. Oh, I don't have my elytra on. All right, we should be able to do this pretty easily. All we need to do is put a dispenser down, put a golden carrot in it, then put a button on top of it, then put a pressure plate over here, then dig down here quickly, place one block of TNT, place dirt and a pressure plate, and then one piece of dirt there, and... 
Easy. Next up, teacher as Lena says egg. I can only assume that means find an egg. So I guess let's go on an egg hunt. Do, do, do. Where are you, egg? I know there are a lot of chickens around here. Yes. Oh my god, that was so fast. Take that. All right, next up, Hamaliosha wants me to build a giant Minecraft sign, and apparently I can write on it whatever I want. Okay. First, we need to see what an actual sign looks like. Hmm, interesting. Okay, I say we do one pixel equals one block. So, we are going to need a lot of wood, and there's only one place to get that. All right, that's all the wood, and we will place our model sign here. So, the stem is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 blocks tall. And we'll build it out of logs. Now the plan is to build these darker lines out of logs and build these thicker pale lines out of planks. And done. And now we use black concrete to write whatever we want on it. Yeah, you guys should definitely listen to the sign. And whilst you're doing that, let's move on to the next idea. So, Termit says build an upside down farm with upside down cows and pigs. All right, this is going to be difficult. Let's start with the easy bit, which is going to be some dirt and also some fences. Wait a second, that's actually going to be a problem. How are we going to get the grass to go upside down? Oh, actually, I think I've got an idea to make this work. We might be able to use moss. All right. So we'll do two layers of dirt here, and then we could put a layer of moss under here to act as the grass. All right, so now we've got this upside down piece of land. But to make it a farm, we need cows and pigs like the comments said. Nope, we don't need one of these guys. But I'll tell you what, I'll double the price again to $400 if this egg gives us a chicken. Please, please no, please. Oh, thank God. I did not want that to happen again. All right, we found some cows. Yoink. You are coming with me, sir. And you are coming with me. This way, Mr. Cow. Not a speed. All right, now we need to somehow get these guys to stand upside down on that grass. Yeah, that's going to be easy. Bruh. So my plan here is to put these cows in a hole for now. Get in the hole, guys. Come on, into the hole. Then, actually, we're going to need to destroy this to do a bit of a test. Okay, all right, that cow can go there. So I think that fence needs to go one down. That wow. cow is definitely going to die. <laughs> Look how fast he's going. Um, is there any way I can save this guy? <laughs> okay, but the test was successful. This will all make sense in a second, guys. So we'll put one here, one here. And then we'll add upside down fences all the way along here. Like a farm, but upside down. We can get rid of this. Make that all look nice. Okay, now we're going to rename all these name tags to Dinner Bone. And what this should do is make the mob upside down which is actually really useful for us so now the plan is to come over here and attach this guy to the fence oh my god i didn't mean for him to hit that okay and then we should just be able to place the moss back over like that and now he is standing upside down on the farm so now we just need to get another cow and two more pigs this actually looks so cool let's get the rest of the mobs hello piggy so dinner bone and i think that'll do we could just fill this in and we have an upside down farm that was really cool but time is running out now and we've still got one comment to finish off the netherite beacon this build is going to be insanely hard to do but let's gear up and grab all the tnt we've got so i threw myself into the netherite mines, aiming for what seemed like an impossible goal. Lava was everywhere, but so was ancient debris. It just kept coming, and at one point, I even went crazy. Nether right, nether right, nether right. But after being in there for what felt like days, I returned with enough netherite to make four netherite blocks. But although I didn't complete that idea, it is time to name my favorite idea and the winner of $200. And the winner of my favorite idea goes to the capybara. Capybara. Capybara, 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 capybara. This is a camel. It's Minecraft 1.20's newest mob. And I want to be the first person to get 1,000 camels in a hardcore Minecraft world. And of course, to store 1,000 camels, we're going to have to create a massive Massive camel paradise with everything a camel needs. But to make that happen, we need to find our first camel. I'm not really sure how far to go. I just know we need to be thousands of blocks away from our base. Come on, we're nearly there. Okay, I think here we'll do. Now from here, we need to find ourselves a desert. The reason it's important to find a desert is camels only spawn in desert villages. Yeah, this is a bit too small of a desert. Camels, where are you? I swear I've seen every kind of biome except a desert. 
Oh my god, let's go. This is the new like cherry blossom biome. This is sick. Wow. And more importantly, it shows us we're definitely in 1.20 chunks. So the camel's got to be close. Wait, let's go. It's a desert. There's got to be a village. Yes. Oh my god. Let's go. We have ourselves a camel. Oh my god. I am on a camel. These things are so tall. Imagine what a thousand of them is going to look like. Speaking of which, to get more camels, we're going to need to breed them, which requires two camels. So for now, this guy can get in the hole. One camel down, one camel to go. Come on, there's got to be another village. Yes, and another camel. Perfect. Wait, but how are we going to transport this camel to the other village? Uh. Wait, maybe I can get him in a boat? Wait a second. I've just seen camels don't fit in boats. The only other way I can think of is leads, but we don't have any of them. Or a saddle. Where are we going to get one of those from? Wait, can you get a saddle in here? No. Wait, maybe there'll be a saddle in here? No. Wait a second, I've just done some research and we're not actually going to need a saddle. All we need is some cacti and hopefully... Yes, the camels should follow us and they also eat it. We have a long journey ahead of us. I think I'll call this guy Roger. No, not again. So lazy. Let's go. So now we can finally feed these guys some cactus and hopefully create a baby camel. Oh my God, this guy is so cute. <laughs> but if we're going to do that like a thousand times, we're going to need about 2000 cactus. And I'm not even sure there's that much in the entire desert. Hmm, what are we going to do? This calls for a massive cactus farm, but we have no materials and we're over 50,000 blocks away from all of our farms and our chest room. Well, I guess we'll have to do this the old fashioned way. Come on, cactus. Okay, that's the cactus for the farm collected. Now we need a bunch of wood that we can turn into fences. Whoa, this tree is actually kind of cool, but it's still going to become a cactus farm. All right, and that's all the fences. Now, next up is 260 glass. The sand for this should be the easy part, but how are we going to smelt it when we have no fuel? Wait a second. Uh, yes. There's iron in here. We can use it to make a bucket and then use this lava as a fuel source. Let's go. Okay, and finally, that's all the glass we need. But we have used up all our iron on this bucket and we still need a bunch of hoppers for this farm. So it looks like we're going mining. All of this to get a thousand camels. It's gonna look so cool though. Yes, iron. Let's go. Massive cactus farm, here we come. Oh yeah. Ow. Why did I say ow in real life? All right, now we've got a problem because I only have my silk touch pickaxe with us and we can't get this iron out of the ores. Uh, so we literally need to get this cobblestone, craft it into a pickaxe and use this to mine the iron. Yeah, this world is over 4,000 days old. <laughs> and so with some lava from this lava lake, I was able to smelt up the iron and craft up all the things we need for this farm. And now it's building time. Let's make this interesting. If I don't finish building the farm in 20 minutes, then I have to give a random person in my Discord server a shout out. Okay, so three, two, one, go. All right. Uh, first thing we need to do is get glass and make a perimeter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, from here we need to add a bunch of sand. Oh my god, I forgot about this part. Then we need to do a pattern like this. Oh my god, what? I'm actually really not sure if we're going to be able to do it or not. There we go. What's next? All right, now we need to dig holes along here like this. No, I keep messing up. Oh my god, what is that? There's a ravine under the build. No. Oh my god. No, this is really going to cost us a lot of time. Wait, why don't we just build it on the grass instead of putting dirt under it? Oh no, this is going to cost us so much time. One, two, three, four, five. Oh no, there's mobs everywhere now. We need to sleep. The time is not looking good. We can also use this water to clear out the grass. And then we need to do the sand pattern again. Nice, we're making good progress. Very nice. Now we dig up these. Come on. Then in each one of these spots, we place an open fence gate. Right now we need to dig off hole here, 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 and here. And now we need to make the collection system under the farm. Come on. I'm going to place some blocks here. Connect these holes up. 
Oh, we're running out of time. All right, that's all connected. Oh, no, we've only got like two minutes left. Oh, we have to go sleep. Come on. And we just had water there, there. Oh, no, the time's going to run out. And there's no way we're going to be able to finish this farm. <laughs> We have failed. All right, so shout out to Percival and J-Bear. Now let's finish this farm. All right, so this is one layer of the cactus farm and it produces about 200 cactus per hour. But I'm thinking we need about a thousand, so... And just like that, we have a thousand cactus per hour cactus farm. I also had to fly home and get ourselves a Fortune 3 pickaxe. So in a minute, we can build our giant camel enclosure. But first, we need to bring the camels here. Now, this is going to be hard because we still don't have a saddle. And this is no longer the camel hole. If I grab some cactus. Come on, camels. Hello there. Time to go to your new home. Let's go. Oh my god, these guys take up so much space and there's only three of them. I wonder if a thousand of them will crash my PC. No, don't sit down. Well, I think we're leaving a camel behind. Okay, and now that we've got two camels here, we can start to breed them again. One cactus for you and one for you. And we now have four camels. So whilst we're waiting for these guys to be able to breed again, let's build them an awesome enclosure. I think we'll use sandstone for this. Oh, it's so satisfying. Then we can use this to craft up some sandstone walls and build a safe enclosure for our camels. Excuse me, Mr. Camel, you need to get inside this fence, please. Perfect. Wait, how did he escape? Um, wait, what? Camels can walk on walls. Um, I guess we have to make them too high into the enclosure. Oh my god, even the baby ones can go over it. Let's make sure they're nice and secure. And there we go. The camels are nice and secure. But because these walls have to be too high, it requires double the amount of sandstone. So I think we'll just upgrade the enclosure as we get more and more camels. So for a little while, everything was going well. The cactus farm was producing a lot of cactus and I was making good progress with breeding up the camels. But that's when I realized getting to 1,000 camels wasn't going to be be as easy as I thought. You see, each camel has a five minute cooldown before it can breed again. That doesn't sound too bad, right? But you also have to consider each camel takes 20 minutes to grow up so that it can be bred with other camels. And consequently, it took us 40 minutes to get eight camels. Meaning continuing at this rate, 1000 camels would take us over three entire days to get. So I guess the only thing we can do is work as fast as we can. However, I soon realized that the more camels we have, the more camels we can get in each breeding cycle, meaning it's going to take a lot less time than I thought. All right, so we now have 72 camels, but I don't think this enclosure is going to fit anymore. So the plan is to upgrade this tiny enclosure into a camel's paradise. It will be filled with everything a camel could ever want, and it's going to be massive, so it will have plenty of room for our 1,000 camels. So step one is building a massive wall around the area for the camels. But we don't want to make a boring old wall like this, so let's try and spice it up a bit. Hmm, I think acacia wood would go very nicely with sandstone. Alright, let's see what we can do with this. We'll get some walls and some fences. Now we just need to figure out which pattern we like the best. Hmm, yeah, I'm definitely thinking I like this one, but is it camel proof? And to find that out, we need a saddle. So we better get searching. Oh, there is a village. There is a decent chance there might be a saddle in a chest. Nope. Nope. That is a crafting table. Not a chest. <gasps> no saddle in the village. Ooh. A desert village. Why is finding a saddle so hard? Ooh. A desert temple. Apparently there's a 23.5% chance of a saddle in here. So let's hope we get lucky. No. No. Yes! Oh my god, let's go. <laughs> Alright, time for my first time ever riding a camel. Oh, let's go! This is sick. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, camels have a dashing ability so they can leap forward like that. <laughs> That's really cool. But now for the ultimate question. 
Is this wall camel proof? Yes, it is. Oh my God, yes. The camel can't get over it. So now that we have our wool design, let's grind for the materials. But thankfully, whilst I was waiting for the camels to breed, I was mining a bunch of sandstone. So that's not going to be a problem. What we really need is acacia wood. Okay, I think we've got everything we need. Now let's build the massive camel protection wall. First, we'll do one layer of this all the way around. And whilst I was doing this, I was making sure to leave enough space to build all the other cool things for our 1,000 camels. We need to make sure that it's 100% camel proof so our camels are nice and safe. Oh no, oh no this, this ravine, ravine might, might be, a be a problem later. later. But now we'll just build across like this. And we are done with the first layer. Now let's do the second. This one's gonna take even longer, but it's gonna make it look so much cooler. And there we go. The camel protection wall is complete and it's absolutely massive. So now it's time to free the camels and see if the camel protection wall actually works. Be free, camels, be free. Go explore your new enclosure. There's so much room for activities. Hopefully the wall is fully camel proof, but let's just see. Uh-oh, that's not good. Okay, so I'm controlling the camel, and I can get up this bit, but I don't think regular camels are smart enough to do that on their own. Um, maybe I was wrong. No! No, come back! Camel, no! We're losing camels! We can't have this. We need to fix it. It only happens when the fences are on the corners, so if we just replace them, that should fix it. And now the wall is 100% camel proof. So before we move on to step two of our camel paradise plan, let's get closer to 1,000 camels. Oh, wow. wow. This cactus farm is so good. Okay, this baby camel is my 120th camel, but that means we're still only 12% of the way to 1,000 camels. So we'll have to come back to breeding them later, but for now, it's time to move on to step two of our camel paradise plan. I want to build pyramids like the ones in Egypt, so my camel paradise really feels like the desert. And thankfully, we have a bunch of sandstone left over from building the walls. So first, let's lay out the base of the pyramid. All right, and now that we've got this massive base, let's make some progress on the pyramid. Come on. All right, I think we need to pause construction on the pyramid. Remember earlier when I said these holes might be a problem? Well, they are definitely a problem. An enemy <laughs> and we need to fix them. Come on, camels. I am going to save you. Maybe they'll come out if I show some cactus right come on guys yes you're free yes and now quickly let's patch up the hole and whilst we're at it let's camel proof the rest of the area we don't want any fried camels now do we come on guys get out of there no don't you dare camel why are you trying to go in the ravine yeah i don't care about rabbits you can you can go down there and now for the biggest ravine. I really hope there's no camels down there, but I think the best way to do this is to just do a layer of sandstone and a layer of sand. All right, the holes are filled. Let's get back to building our pyramid. And to make this more interesting, here are some facts about camels that you probably didn't know. Camels are three blocks tall, so when you ride them, smaller mobs like zombies and husks can't reach you. It's actually pretty OP. Camels can also swim in three deep water without kicking you off. This will be very important later. Finally, camels have cool floppy ears when you ride them with a saddle. Yeah, this is definitely the best one. And that is the pyramid complete. But before we make it look really cool, I've spotted these camels escaping our area. So quickly, we need to improve our walls. All right, now the wall is 100% camel proof. We just have to somehow bring all these camels back. All right, camel number one. I wonder how many camels actually escaped. And he is safe and secure. Camel two, camel number four. Here's number seven, 11, 18. Oh my God, there's even a camel in this forest over here. In total, there was 34 camels that escaped and I managed to return every single one of them safely back to our camel paradise. Now I can finally decorate the pyramid. And now wow. with this done, it's nearly time to move on to step three of the plan. But first, I think it's time we got closer to that 1000 camel goal.
Okay, that's about 400 camels. Now let's move on to step three of the camel paradise plan, which of course is to build a camel oasis for all the camels to refill their hump. So for this, we're gonna need two buckets of water. And now we need a big hole in the ground. So with a bit of magic, subscribe to Lockdown Life. Wow, that was pretty easy. Now we need some dirt. And we're just gonna put a layer of this one away from the top. Excuse me, Mr. Camel. Can you get out of the hole, please? Thank you. All right, now that it's completely covered, we can use our water buckets to start filling up the oasis. Oh, that's so satisfying. Okay, now we can get rid of the dirt. All right, it's looking good, but we need to add a few finishing touches. The first of which is some lily pads, and I know just where to get them. Yeah. Ooh, we could also grab a fish. Or two. And finally, I'm gonna add an island in the middle for the most elite camels. And of course, this is only three deep, so a camel can walk in it without kicking me off. And whilst we're waiting for some camels to join the island, let's get closer to 1,000 camels, because we're still only 40% of the way there. Wow, it's getting cramped now. Imagine it at a thousand camels. And just as we hit 600 camels, we had our first visitors to the elite camel island. Sup, guys? Huh? Now, before we get to 1,000 camels, we need to complete two final quick things of our plan. The first of which is building the world's largest cactus. And I think we'll build that here. All right, this is going to hurt my boots a lot, but hopefully we can do this without dying. How long do we have to do this for? Because I'm taking damage. Ow. Well, my health is uh, getting a bit low. It's kind of scary. Where is the world limit? No. No. Oh my god. The ground's going out of render distance. This is one tall cactus. No. Two hearts. Ow. Oh. Yes. Oh my god, we did it. And only two hearts left. That is one tall cactus. And now finally, to honor the 1,000 camels, I want to build a giant camel statue for all of them to enjoy. And we'll do this whilst breeding up the camels to get to 1,000 camels. Is my PC gonna crash? I don't know, but let's do this. So after tens of hours of planning, building, and breeding, the camel paradise is now fully complete and occupied by over 1,000 camels. And I'm still getting over 40 FPS because my new PC is a beast. So sniffers are in Minecraft now, and I want lots of them, but I have none. Hmm, how are we gonna fix this? I've got a plan. We're gonna find a sniffer egg, hatch it, and duplicate it until we get 1,000 sniffers. Then we're gonna create a sniffer sanctuary big enough for all of them to enjoy. But to get our first sniffer, we need this brush. Nice, and now we need to find a warm ocean biome. Come on. On. Yes, we're here. Okay, now we need to look for suspicious sun. Uh, excuse me. And it looks like this. Now we just use our brush on it and we got wheat. Oh my God, we have our very first sniffer egg. Okay, now let's do that for the rest of this area. Emeralds, pottery shard. Oh my God, let's go, a second one. So now I'm gonna place these eggs here and now we wait an uncertain amount of time for these eggs to hatch. Let's go! Our first sniffer out of the 1,000 sniffers we're gonna have. <laughs> it's sniffing already. Let's go! Our second sniffer! Wait a second, but how do we breed these guys? They've definitely got to grow up first. Oh my god, they're massive. But now, how do we breed them? Let's try wheat. No. What about potatoes? No. Carrots? No. How are we ever going to get to a thousand sniffers if we can't figure out how to breed them? But that's when I discovered the only way to breed sniffers is by using torch flowers. And the only way to get them is from sniffers digging them up. So it looks like we need to use these guys to build an awesome sniffer farm. But first, let's upgrade this enclosure. Ooh, our first torch flower seed. If we get one more, we can breed these guys. Oh no, it's going night. We need to build this enclosure fast. I think here will do. Now we can say goodbye to the pink sheep and... Yes, 
That's one sniffer. And that's both sniffers in the enclosure. It doesn't look like much right now, but remember, this is only version one. And the final version of this enclosure is going to be insane and have everything a sniffer could ever want. But now it's time to build the torch flower seed farm. And for it, we're going to need a lot of resources. And thankfully, we have everything we need in here. All right, we've got everything we need to build this farm. And I think here is a pretty good place to build it. So let's flatten the area. Now let's build the area where the farming sniffers will actually stand. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, and before we fill it in, let's build the collection system underneath that will actually collect all the torch flowers. All right, so we'll have a hole here and our chest here where all the torch flower seeds should go into. Now we'll have two hoppers here like this, and now it's time for our rails. Then we'll add some powered rails here to make sure the cart doesn't stop. I really hope this is enough powered rails, otherwise the collection system is not gonna work. Okay, let's test if this works. Oh wait, we should probably power the rails first. How do we do that? I guess we have to go underneath. Yes. Okay, now if we turn this into a hopper minecart and put it on the tracks, we have a fully working collection system. Wait a second, the sniffers dug up more torch seeds. Now we have two, we can breed them. Let's go! <laughs> this is so cool. And we have our third sniffer egg. Ooh, this might be useful for the farm. So let's quickly finish this bit up and add some glass walls around it. Now we have a fully functioning sniffer farm. All we're missing is the sniffer. Oh, these sniffer eggs take ages to hatch. In fact, they take even longer than I thought. Each sniffer egg takes 20 minutes to hatch, meaning if we hatched one egg at a time, it would take over two weeks to get 1,000 sniffers. And I literally don't have that long because next week I'm meant to be recording another video. So yeah, we're in trouble. I do remember hearing something about moss and that it helps the eggs hatch faster. I guess that's our only option. Yes, moss. Oh, a uh, creeper. No. Nope. Okay, hopefully this actually works and I'm not just making this up. All right, let's see if this helps. Let's go, our third sniffer. So it turns out moss actually makes sniffer eggs hatch two times faster. And that factor, along with us hatching multiple eggs at the same time, should make getting 1,000 sniffers in our time frame possible, but it's still gonna be really hard. Oh, he's so cute. Maybe we should bring those guys over here so we can get all the torch seeds collected. Come on, guys. I've got someone to introduce you to. Ooh, more torch seeds. Come with me. There's one. And there's number two. Now we can breed these guys again and start working on getting our fourth sniffer. And whilst we're waiting for that egg to grow up, I think it's time we upgraded our enclosure. Let's say goodbye to this stinky first enclosure. And now that it's gone, let's work on step one of our insane sniffer sanctuary, which is going to be building a sniffer protection wall around this entire area. And because sniffers are mainly red and green, I think we should use those colors for the wolves. Which brings me to a mangrove swamp, because I think these mangrove fences will work perfectly for the red. And for the green, we'll use green concrete, which I got from my concrete duplicating UFO. But now for the ultimate question, which fence design do we use? I like this one better. So now let's build this fence design all the way around this area, leaving enough space for 1000 sniffers. This is going to be a big fence. First, we'll do this layer. Um, do you mind, spider? I'm trying to build the sniffer wall. Oh my god, this area is actually massive. It's taken me about 15 minutes to build this first layer. But finally, the first layer is complete. Nice. And we also now have four sniffers. Oh my god, that's good. Wait, yes. And we've got torch flowers. So we can start working on getting our fifth sniffer. Let's build the second layer of the wall. And the sniffer protection wall is complete. We also now have five sniffers and one egg hatching. But we've still got a long way to go to fill up this massive area with sniffers. So before we move on to step two of our sniffer sanctuary plan, let's fill up our sniffer farm. Because we're going to need a lot more of these seeds if we're ever going to get to a thousand sniffers. There's sniffer number six. Reading time. All right, there's two more eggs. And that's two more sniffers. Wow, this is taking a long time. So I think I'll just AFK and let the torch flowers build up. Right, that's a lot of seeds. Give me lots of eggs. All right, there's four eggs. But we've still got 30 seeds, so let's see how many we can get. Ooh. 
and we now have 44 fully grown sniffers. So the farm is now full. But before we start populating this area with sniffers, we need to build a place to hatch sniffer eggs. And luckily, that is exactly what step two is in our sniffer sanctuary plan. Ow. And we're gonna build it here, so let's flatten this area. All right, first, we'll lay down all our moss. This is going to make hatching sniffers so much easier. And we have enough to be able to hatch 70 at a time. Next, I want to build like a canopy over top of it using some red wool. The only problem is I don't have any red wool. So we'll just get some red dye and bang, these sheep are now red. All right, nice. Now I want to add some things that will give the baby sniffers some culture as soon as they hatch. I'm thinking paintings and some great music for them to enjoy. Do you make them like this? Yes. Then we'll place down some concrete and stuff here. And paintings. Okay, so that's the paintings, and now for the music. I have this jukebox, but it doesn't have any discs. So let's try and get some. I haven't done this for a while, so hopefully we don't die. Oh! Okay, not good first attempt. Yes, let's go. All right, I'm getting distracted, but before we move on to step three of the Sniffer Sanctuary plan, we should probably test this place out. That is a lot of torch flower seeds, so we should get 22 eggs. Yes, yeah, sniffer eggs. Only 21, but that's good enough. Oh, yeah. And whilst these sniffers are hatching, I want to create some more farms. You see, Mojang says that sniffers are extinct animals like dinosaurs. And the seeds that they dig up are for extinct plants. So I was thinking it would be cool if we could decorate this area with some plants that the sniffers are used to. So to do that, we need to farm them. First, we need to create some space. So subscribe to Lockdown Life. Nice. And now we need water. Okay, torch flower seeds need to be used to breed the sniffers, but we can plant all of these pitcher pods. I guess we could do a few torch flower seeds. I wonder how cool these are gonna look. They're like giant turnips. Oh my god, they grow fast. But I guess the ultimate question is, what's gonna happen first? The sniffers hatch or these fully grow? Oh, the sniffers are already hatched. Yeah, they got a bit of a head start. But anyways, we now have 65 out of the 1,000 sniffers. Ah, uh, we're only 6% of the way there. Oh my god, we're going to have a lot of sniffers. Let's see how cool these plants look. Let's go. They're all fully grown and they look so cool. This is sick. I can't believe this is vanilla Minecraft. And now let's decorate this area. This is really going to make all the sniffers feel like they're at home. I thought this update was going to be really bad, but it turns out they've added so much. Let me know what you guys think about the update in the comments. Place some up here. One for this sniffer. And that's all of those ones. Now let's scatter a few torch flowers around. Nice. And whilst those plants were growing, I bred up the sniffers. So let's hatch 24 more eggs. Let's get closer to 1,000 sniffers. Let's go, we now have 89 sniffers, which means we're just under 9% of the way there to 1,000 sniffers. However, I kind of feel like I don't belong. I really want to blend in with all these sniffers, but I kind of stick out. But I have a plan to fix that. I want to get this. It's going to be hard to get, but I think we can do it. Wait, I think I just heard this pink sheep say something. I bet you can't get the sniffer armor in 10 minutes. Oh, and if you don't, you have to kill 20 sniffers mo ha 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 I'm not gonna kill my own sniffers. Are you scared, lol? All right, I've gotta prove that guy wrong. The 10 minutes starts now. All right, uh, quick, Elytra, go, 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 go. Okay, we need leather armor so we can dye it. So let's kill as many cows and horses as we can. Leather, please. All right, that's all the leather. We need to fly back to base and get a gold helmet. Yes, gold. All right, there's the helmet. And craft up the leather armor. Chest plate, leggings, boots. The plan's working so far. Uh, red dye, red dye, yes. Okay, dye this red. All right, now we need some emeralds from our villagers so that we can put the trims on it. Is there anything we could trade with them? Ooh, we can steal emeralds from our beacon. <laughs> Sorry, beacon, but I need this. Yes. All right, now all we need is the armor trim thing, which means we need to fly to 1.20 chunks. Hopefully we can get there in time. I really don't want to lose my sniffers. All right, we can get these things from loads of different places. I'm not sure if we can get them from pirate ships, though. No, maybe in here. Come on. 
Yes. Oh, no, we need one more. Wait, we have no rockets. No. All right, let's quickly apply them. So emeralds, we need these and like that. Oh, we just need one more. But we've got no rockets left. We have to go on foot. Oh, come on. There's got to be a structure. Oh, a village. Do these have things in? Search every chest. Quick. No, I'm not even sure if you can get them in here. No, there's nothing here. A ruined nether portal. Let's go. Oh, what the hell? There's not one. And we've run out of time. Great. Well then, I'm a man of my word. We didn't get the final trim on the boots, so we didn't get the sniffer armor complete, meaning we now have to kill 20 sniffers. And... 20. Are you happy now? R.I.P. Sniffers. Ha 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 ha. We definitely need to get payback on him. But since we're now down to 69 sniffers, I think it's time we start repopulating. And whilst doing that, I'll be thinking about the next step in our sniffer sanctuary plan. All right, first let's breed up all these guys. And then we'll try and use these eggs to reinvest in this farm. That way the rates just keep on getting better and better. Although them being really cramped might be an issue for breeding. I'm sure it won't be too bad. All right, that middle moss section is now full with eggs. So let's place the rest the eggs over here and after these eggs hatch we should be back to where we were but we want to make some serious progress to 1000 sniffers because a thousand sniffers is a lot of sniffers and whilst those eggs are hatching we can continue breeding up these guys and getting more eggs so we can add some more eggs and now these eggs are hatching let's go more sniffers can also breed up these wild sniffers more sniffers inbound oh and speaking of sniffers in something uh there is some sniffers in this cave how did you manage to get in there? Operation Rescue the Sniffer. Come on, you got this. Oh my god, you're so big. How'd you get in this cave? All right, come out. This way. Nice. I hope there's no more caves, but like, let's just block this one up for now. Yes, more sniffers. Woo, three, two, one. Nice. Oh, I, I totally called it. All right, and about two hours later, we are now on 200 sniffers. But now it's time to move on to step four of the plan. Building all these sniffers a playground so they can enjoy their time within this sniffer sanctuary. So let's grab everything we're going to need. And this looks like a good spot. So first, we'll build a trampoline. We'll use red around the sides of it. And of course, slime in the middle. And when whilst we're building this playground, let me tell you some things about sniffers that you probably didn't know. The sniffers walking animation is actually based off a centipede. All right, let's finish off this trampoline. Nice. Next, I kind of want to build a water slide going down towards the sea. We need to make it quite wide so sniffers can actually fit on it. And now to make it work, we just need to add water here. But before we do that, did you know baby sniffers are actually called snifflets? They're actually so cute. Here we go. Perfect. And the final thing I want to add is sniffer monkey bars. Could you imagine a sniffer actually doing monkey bars? <laughs> Nice, and before we get sniffers to try out the playground, did you know that a sniffer smell is so good, it can smell that squid from here? Alright, I made that one up, but seriously, sniffers are so cool. And a real fact is that they sniff up plants like these every 8 minutes. Alright, come on sniffers, let's try out the playground. What do you want to try out first? Uh, maybe the trampoline? I don't think they're very good at the trampoline. Uh, maybe the monkey bars? Oh, they're too shy to use the monkey bars. Surely they'll be able to use the water slide. Yes. There he goes! He's going down the water slide. <laughs> oh, he loves it. So, what did you think of that? So, before we move on to the next step in our plan, let's make some more sniffer progress. Because we're still only 20% of the way there to 1,000 sniffers. Okay, we now have 370 sniffers, meaning we're 37% of the way there to 1,000 sniffers, which is pretty good. But whilst I was waiting for the eggs to hatch, I was researching 1.20. I found out that they've added these pots, and one variation of the pot is actually a sniffer pot. So I think it's only right we get this pot and build a museum for it as step number five of our plan. This is going to be really hard because there's loads of different patterns, and you find them in the same way you find sniffer eggs. So we're going to need a lot of brush. And now we need to find loads of suspicious sand. First time lucky? What is it? Oh, it's coal. That's an emerald, so don't need that. Um, is that a trident guy? 
Oh, I actually got it. That's sick. All right, it looks like there's no sus sand here, but let's see if we can continue to be lucky. There's a floating pillager outpost. Um, what the hell is going on here? And I just got mining fatigue, but we can use this to finish our sniffer armor. I may have just done that. All right, come on. I just want that sniffer part. It's going to look so cool. No. Yes. Oh, a pottery shard. But which one is it? No, it's the wrong one. Oh, yes. Another one. But I am drowning. It's the same one. Oh, yes. We got it. We actually got it. Oh my god, a sniffer egg. And another pot. Yes, we got a second snort pottery shard. If we can get two more of these, we can make a full sniffer pot. Ow. Where did that even come from? Wait, there's two of them. No, 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 no. Oh, that was kind of close. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh my god, only one more to go. A sniffer egg? Maybe. Yes. Oh my god, thank god. All right, so after about two hours of searching, we have six more sniffer eggs. And more importantly, we have the sniffer pot. But before we build a museum for it, I think it's worthy of at least 500 sniffers. Wait, I literally have a stack of eggs. Wait, I'm going to speed bridge with eggs. Whoa. So we're now at 500 sniffers, 50% of the way there to 1,000. So now we can finally build this museum. Here looks like a good place. I'm thinking pillars in the corner. Those are not pillars. And we'll have chiseled quartz as the floor. And for the roof, we'll use some quartz stairs. And now quickly before we add the pot, let's just do a splash of glowstone around the pot. And here we go. The Sniffer Pot Museum has been completed. So with step five of the plan complete, that means we've only got one step left before we get to 1,000 sniffers. And that is building a giant sniffer statue to watch over all of the sniffers. Oh, and by the way, this statue is going to be one pixel per block. So it's going to be absolutely massive, meaning we're going to breed up the sniffers at the same time. Hopefully this doesn't crash my PC. Here we go. And so, after hours and hours of breeding, hatching, and building, the sniffer enclosure is complete with over 1,000 sniffers. We have a fully working sniffer farm, an amazing hatching area, a playground for the sniffers to enjoy, as well as the almighty sniffer pot, and finally, the giant sniffer statue with me standing on top in sniffer armor. 200 million blocks. That's the same distance as flying around the Earth five times. Or the distance I'm going to have to travel to see every corner of the world border. How am I going to do it? Well, that all starts with this horse. Because when I run in Minecraft, I get tired, but horses don't. Which means they're extremely useful for traveling long distances. But because 200 million blocks is an extremely long distance, we need to make sure we find the fastest horse possible. And that's where this comes in. The horse speed measure Measuring machine 5000. Let me show you how it works. This will be your horse number one. Come on. Yes. So now we just run in a straight line along here and it will tell us the horse's exact speed. Nine blocks per second, which is actually quite bad. So now the search is on for the faster horses. So let's try horse number two. Yes. Uh oh, this guy doesn't feel very fast. All right, what's he gonna get? Oh my god, seven blocks per second. Horse number three. Ooh, horse number five already feels quite fast. But let's see just how fast he is. 10 blocks per second. You can stay in the pen. But we're going to need a lot faster than 10 blocks per second because I made a bet with my brother gamers. So wait a second. You think it's impossible for me to see all four corners in seven days? Uh, yeah, obviously. So if he wins the bet, he gets to upload a video on my second channel shouting him out. But if I win the bet, he has to admit in this video that I'm the better Minecraft player. I really want to win this bet, but seven days to see every corner is going to be very hard. So bring on horse number six. Wait, this one's actually quite fast. All right, can this guy beat 10 blocks per second? Here we go. Yes, 11. All right, lucky horse number seven. Something about this guy feels a bit different. All right, that deserves something special. Horse number nine. Ooh, 
Yes! Oh my god, 12 blocks per second. That is very good. If we can get another one of these, we can breed two of them together and hopefully maybe get a 13 block per second horse. Number 13. Horse number 16. All right, this guy is horse number 25, I think. And I have a pretty good feeling about this one. Look how fast he is. He's just moving around all over the place. But it's kind of hard to tame. Come on. Yes. Oh, my God. This guy feels fast. Here we go. Oh, let's go. A 13 block per second horse. That means if we can get another one of these, we might even be able to get a 14 block per second horse. Um... Do you mind? So as the hours tick down on our bet, that's what I did for the rest of the evening. Going through horse after horse and testing their speed. Until this happened. All four of these horses scored 13 blocks per second. They are literally the fastest horses I have ever seen. But let's see if we can make them even faster. And to do this, we're gonna breed them. Hey ya. Ooh, it feels fast, but just how fast? 13 blocks per second. Try number two. Only 12 blocks per second. How fast is this little guy? 13 blocks per second. Not gonna lie, I'm not even sure a 14 block per second horse is even possible. Ooh, this guy feels fast. Oh my god! Yes! 14 blocks per second. How is that even possible? Oh ho ho! Let's go! This guy is insane. Wait a second, if 14 was possible, does that mean over 14 is? Because literally one block per second faster could save us tens of hours. All right, so if we use this guy and breed him with a 13 block per second horse, maybe we can get another 14? Could this be the one? Only 13. Come on, all of these guys are 14 block per second horses. Surely we can get one that's above it. Come on. Oh, so close. Nearly there. Oh, is this even possible? Oh my god, really? Did that actually just happen? Did it actually happen? Oh my god, let's go! We have an over 14 block per second horse. That is absolutely insane. But before we use this horse to get to our first corner of the map, I think we should make banners to place in each corner to show that I've explored the entire world. So for this, we're gonna need a loom, and then we're gonna need some black dye. <laughs> I'm in danger! That's a funny looking squid. Did you sell anything useful? Yeah, he didn't. There's the black dye. We'll need some wool. Craft up some banners. Right now, how do we make a lockdown life themed thing? All right, I think I've got an idea. So we choose this one, make it black. Then we do this one with white. Then with black, we do this. And then with white, we do this. That's kind of scary, actually. Oh, my God. Um, can we make the mouth a bit smaller somehow? Oh, there we go. It's kind of... Yeah, that's my face. So let's get three more of these, one for each corner. Nice. All right, now the fastest way to travel is going to be on the nether roof. So let's build ourselves a nether portal. And the reason we're going to travel on the nether roof is this horse is about 15 blocks per second in the overworld, which means in the nether, it travels at 120 blocks per second because one block in the overworld equals eight blocks in the nether. All right, let's go. We've got no time to waste because we've only got about 160 hours left of our bear. Also, I kind of didn't do any calculations before this, but I'm just going to hope that we have enough time. Not gonna lie, my finger kind of hurts holding down this. I wonder if we can get like an auto clicker to do it. Let's go! I came up with a genius solution. I'm not holding the keyboard anymore and it's going straight forward towards the corner. Perfect. Now I guess we just wait and hope we're traveling fast enough. All right, so it's been two hours. Let's see just how far in the overworld we got. And reluctantly, that's when I realized that it would literally take over 600 hours using the horse method to get to every single corner of the world border. So I had no other choice to turn back. 
And on the way back, I realized we didn't even have a return method, so it would take literally over 1,000 hours to do it this way. All right, so we now know we can't use horses, so the obvious answer is using elytras. But there are two massive problems with this method. The first is, even with using shulker boxes and an ender chest, traveling 200 million blocks will still take way too many rockets. Hmm. And the second is that we still don't have a way to get back home from the corners. Bruh. But for now, let's focus on solving problem number one. Upon doing some research on the topic, I think I might have found a solution. We're going to slow down time. You see, in one of SP737's videos, he made a machine that slowed down time enough that he could actually travel to the world border with less than one shulker of rockets. But he did this by making a massive nether perimeter for a zombie piglin farm. And building one of those would take hundreds of hours that we simply don't have. So it looks like we're going to have to invent our own. Help. I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm stuck on the boats. No. Help. I'm literally stuck on the boats. So my first idea was to use vines like SB did to stop entity cramming. And I was going to do this with zombies and a really OP mob farm. But it didn't go very well. Is it even making it laggy? Still 120 FPS. Wait, what? Oh, God. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> What have I done? Yeah, it definitely needs a roof. Oh my god, what game is this? <laughs> yeah. So my second idea was this massive redstone thing, but to be honest, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, what have I done? But my third idea seemed like it might actually work. Well, after about 24 hours of testing, that is. Yes. Spam the boats. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's actually working. The FPS is going down. So now we can actually build this in our hardcore world. This is the Boat Spammer 3000. I'll explain how it works later, but all you need to know is this is the reason traveling 200 million blocks might actually be possible. But to make it work, we've got a lot to do. And step one is getting thousands of boats. So let's head to the wood farm. All right, so we're going to need about a shulker box of pure logs. And because this farm is so OP, that's probably going to take about 10 minutes. Come on, wood. All right, 10 minutes has been. Oh my God, that's a lot of wood. And with the other side as well. Yes, that is a full shulker of wood. Okay, so now we can use all this wood and craft it all into boats. Then we'll fill up these chests with all the boats. Oh no, not the planks. No. No. All right, so that is all the boats. But before we turn this thing on and get traveling our 200 million blocks, it's time for step two, which is gathering the rockets and elytras we'll need. All right, so first we'll get the rockets, and I think we have a bunch of them in here. So now with the rockets done, it's time for the elytras. So we'll just jump down here. Hello there. Very nice. And now we'll just fly away from the entire solar system. Oh. There's one right here. Elytra, Elytra, Elytra. Let's go. Elytra number one. Ooh, and diamonds. Ew, that is the most disgusting sword I've ever seen. Here we go. And Elytra number two. Yummy. Ooh, another one already. No, it's a tiny one. All right, we need to hurry up and get some more Elytras because otherwise we are going to lose our bet. All right, and with this elytra repaired, we now have a full shulker of elytras. All right, that's looking pretty good, but we can make it even better by buying some unbreaking three bucks. Great. So that's everything we're going to need. But how are we going to keep this machine running whilst we're in the nether dimension? Well, that's where step number three comes in, building a chunk loader. All right, so first we add a dispenser, build ourselves a nether portal, use our detector rails like this, then we light the portal. All right, now it should be easy. So we literally just do this and light this and this. And now we put this on here. And yes! Oh my god, it's loading the chunk. Perfect. Okay, it's time to turn on the machines. Our world is about to get very laggy. Okay, so it's spamming all the boats, which is going to slow down our game ticks. Okay, let me just demonstrate how this works. So you see we're at Y level 81, and usually one of these rockets would take us up 80 blocks. So we'd get to about 160. But if I do it now that it's getting a bit laggier, you can see that it takes us much higher than 160. And it's literally only going to get more 
more and more powerful. And after one rocket, we're at 650. Time is moving so slow right now. Yeah, even the sun's moving slower. Look at that. It just lags back into place. Oh no, it literally takes ages to eat food. Time is so slow. Okay, all the boats have now officially been dispensed. Now we need to get on top of the nether roof. So step number one for this is using our rockets to go straight up in the air, hundreds of thousands of blocks. And this is why having OP rockets was so important. There's 2,000 blocks. Hopefully we still have time to win the bet because we've only got a little over 100 hours left. These rockets are so OP. 10,000 blocks. Let's go. Now like 490,000 more blocks to go. This is going to take a long time. That's 55,000 blocks. And that's 100,000 blocks up in the air. And our elytra durability has barely even gone down. And that is a quarter of a million blocks up in the air. All right, we just passed 340,000 blocks in the air. And finally, our light turret has run out of durability. So we'll just swap that out. That light turret lasted like eight times longer than it was meant to. All right, here we go. 500,000 blocks in the air. Oh my God. So now we can actually begin our journey to the first corner. We want this value to be 25. Now the X is going up and the Z is going up at the exact same amount. So now all we need to do is keep swapping out these elytras. Oh, and it might be at this point that you're wondering how am I actually going to to get back. Well, I did build this enderpearl stasis chamber before I left, but the way I'm going to activate it is going to be really cool. But you'll have to wait until we get to the first corner to find out what it is. Let's go! 1 million diagonal blocks. All right, it's now literally the next day and we're coming up on 2,750,000 diagonal blocks away. But we are just about to run out of height. Wait, where's the bedrock? Um, oh, nice. So we're now on to our seventh elytra. Oh yeah. Oh my God, slowing down time is actually so OP. Okay, it's been about another five, six hours and we are now at the correct X and Z coordinate. All right, I definitely didn't just pop my totem. If my calculations are correct, this should bring us out straight on the first corner. Oh my God, it's so, so lucky. Please work. Please don't crash my PC, please. Learning terrain. Oh my God. God, that is the corner of my world. I am literally standing in the very corner block of my world. <laughs> this took so long to get here. Whoa, this is insane. And now for our very first banner. We've done it. One out of the four corners. We've still got a lot of blocks to travel. But now comes the question, how am I going to get back? Well, like I said earlier, it's got something to do with that stasis chamber I built back at spawn. And you see, I'm in quite a unique situation because I live with my brother, who's also a Minecraft YouTuber. And if I just press escape and click this open to land button and start land world, it turns my single player world into a private local server. And the perk of that is my brother gamers will be able to join. All right. Are you ready? Yes. I think. Okay. Join my hardcore world. Okay. I'm joining. All right. So you should be at spawn, right? Yes. I'm next to a portal. Okay. You see that big machine? It should have some boats in it. It's yeah. Like machine. Behind it, there should be a trap door. Oh, yeah. Ender Ooh, pill. Okay. Yeah. I see this. Whenever you're ready. Do a countdown and click it, and I should be teleported all the way across from the corner of the map back to spawn. Okay. I really hope this works. Um, Is this a lot of pressure? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm ready. Okay. You are. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> oh my god, I'm back. All right, but now we've still got no time to waste because we still have that bet with gamers. All right, head up here. Where's our ladder at? And then we need to lag our way through here again. Yes. And now we use our OP rockets again to fly thousands and thousands of blocks up in the air. There's 1,000 blocks up. There's 10,000 blocks and there is 100,000 blocks. And we are now about to run out of rockets at 750,000 blocks in the air. There we go. Now we need to line up with negative one, three, four. 
five. Yes, there we go, perfect. Okay, so we're going to X equals 30 million and Z equals minus 30 million this time. Yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, pretty much all of our elytras have run out, but the good news is we are here. Well, we're still 60,000 blocks up, so let's just head straight down. Nice. All right, it's portal time. And hopefully this should be corner number two. I wonder what biome it's going to be this time. Let me know your guesses for the biome in the comments down below. Here we go. What's it going to be? It is a Mesa biome. We must find the corner. Yes, the corner of the world. Oh my God. We have now been to two corners of my world. Speaking of which, it's time to place our banner. Oh yeah. Gamers, take it away. Let's go. I am successfully back from the second world border corner. Speaking of which, there's only two days left on the bet. Uh, who do you think is going to win? Uh, well, obviously me. Hmm, we'll see about that. Okay, so let's put our ender pill for the third corner. I've just realized we don't have enough elytras for this next journey. That is really not good. But I think I've got an idea to fix it. Because you see, in my previous I traveled loads of million blocks videos, we also had to collect a lot of elytras. So theoretically, we should have loads of them stored up in our storage room. Please let there be elytras in here. Please, 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 please. Yes, elytras. Oh my god, that is amazing. All right, and we are ready. You guys know the drill by now. This should be high enough. This time we're going to negative X and negative Z. So we need to get this lined up with 135. There we go. So I'll see you guys in about 30 hours when we reach the corner. All right, here we are, the third corner. What's it going to look like? Ooh, a lush cave biome. Oh, and the corner is right here. Yeah, we should probably put it on the surface, though. Oh, my God. This is going to take ages to mine up. Is there a faster way up? Oh, no. Oh, no. The rocket is really OP. I forgot. There's got to be a way up and out. Oh, yeah. And we can dig through this stone a lot faster. Here we go. Yes. The surface. Wait, the corner is literally an ocean biome. Wait, can you place stuff on the world border? No. I guess we can just put some obsidian here and then our banner. There we go. We have officially been to the third corner, which means there's only one corner left to do. Whenever you're ready, gamers. Hello there. So as of right now, we only have about 10 hours left of our bet. So I'm not sure how this is going to be possible, but let's give it a go. First, we'll throw our final ender pill. And now let's do this. All right, here we go. Up the staircase for the final time. And now ender pill through the bedrock. And of course, go straight up in the air for 700,000 blocks. Okay, I'm pretty sure this should be high enough. Now we need to line it up for the very last time. Now we are heading to the very last corner. Yeah, so during my 30 hour plus flight, I came to the realization that we had 100% lost our bet with gamers. But in doing so, we have nearly explored my entire Minecraft world by traveling over 300 million blocks. That is absolutely insane. And just as I was about to light the final portal, it was clear I couldn't have done any of this without my brother gamers. So gamers, congrats on winning the bet and you can now post whatever you want on my second channel. But now let's finally complete this challenge all right here we are and let's go we've literally explored my entire world and seen every corner of the world border <laughs> that is insane all right gamers you can teleport me back now gamers no! The dragon egg is Minecraft's rarest item. Or is it? You see, there are actually way more rare items, and some that you didn't even know existed. So I'm going to collect them all, starting with the hardest to get mob head in the game, the piglin head. It's so rare that I haven't even seen a single YouTuber with it. To get a piglin head, you need to take a supercharged creeper into the nether and blow up a piglin. But to even get a supercharged creeper, we need a channeling trident. So a lot of these guys are about to die. All right, our first trident guy. And of course, we didn't get it. Another trident guy. Come on. No. 
No, could this be the one? Nope. Yeah, so I've just found out there's only an 8.5% chance of them actually dropping a trident. That's not very good. How is there not a trident guy here? Yes! Oh my god! A trident, finally! That took way too long. So now we enchant this trident with channeling. Oh, well, that was easy. And I guess we should also get mending. All right, and now we wait for a thunderstorm. Hopefully this won't take too long. Ah. All right, come on. Yes, out of the way, zombie. Come on. All right, complete the portal. Light it. No. Oh my god, no. Come on. No, no, no. And the thunderstorm stopped. Great. Oh, that's so much time wasted. And every second counts because in 24 hours, I'm giving a presentation to my friends explaining why the dragon egg is not the rarest item in the game. And I need all the proof I can get. So we'll come back to the piglin head later. First up, we've got the rabbit foot and it's only got a 10% chance of dropping. Wait, can the baby ones drop anything? Nope. Just gonna kill all the adults. Yes, a rabbit foot. Only a few rabbits had to die for this. But of course, this next item is even more rare because there is only a 2% chance of getting a poisonous potato. Nope, that wasn't one. Oh my god. That is actually much faster than I thought. But I don't think this next item is gonna be as easy because the next rare item is actually tall grass, which you can't get with a shear. It just gives you normal grass. Yeah. Instead, the only way to find them is in a specific chest in a savannah village. Oh, that's just a giant potato. A lot of people on Reddit seem to think this is like the rarest item. So let's hope we can actually get it. But surely it can't be that hard to find. Come on. No. Full grass. Yeah, that was really easy. Oh, and you can also get the large fern only from spruce villages. So with these first items collected, I think it's only right that we store them on a presentation board. So we'll start at the bottom and work our way up to the top with the items getting rarer and rarer. Yeah, some of these items are going to be insanely hard to get. So next up is a pottery shard from a trail ruin. And I've actually never seen one, which leads me to believe they are quite rare. I don't even really know what they look like. Just kind of looking for anything that doesn't look normal. Ooh, is that one? That's got to be one. Yes, to find pottery shards, we need suspicious gravel or suspicious sand. Yes! Let's go! We got a pottery shard, a heartbreak pottery shard. Let's just see what else we can get from here. Ooh, is that an armor trim? Why don't we collect all 16 of them? So this is the host armor trim, which is our first one out of 16 to collect. And they're found in loads of different locations. For example, shipwrecks. Oh, that would have been... Pretty good. Maybe there's one in this shipwreck that's not really a shipwreck. It's just a completely constructed ship on land. Ooh, suspicious stew. That's really rare. Apparently, coast armor trims have a 16.7% chance of spawning in these chests. Why am I getting so unlucky? Oh! There we go. All right, maybe it actually was 16%. Next up, we need to find a desert temple to find the dune armor trim. All right, so in a desert pyramid, we have a 14.3%... I have been here before. Have I been to this one? No. So there's about a 14% chance we get it in here. No! All right, come on. No trim, but we did get diamond horse armor. Desert pyramid number five? Yes! Oh my god, thank god. That is a lot of gods. Wow, I've just been researching and these armor trims just get rarer and rarer. There's only a 6% chance for the rib armor trim to spawn in a nether fortress. All right, here's the first nether fortress. Hopefully, we can just get really lucky. And there was no chests in that entire nether fortress. Yeah, I think it's safe to say we didn't get lucky. All right, nether fortress number two. All right, this feels like a chest area. Yes, here we go, chests. Diamond horse armor. Nope. Ooh. Yes, oh my God. <laughs> we actually got so lucky. Do you mind? All right, the next one is the sentry armor trim and they're only found in pillager outposts, but I literally can't find one. Ah. Yes. All right, now there's a 25% chance that we actually get it in the chest. No, but we do have a goat horn. All right, outpost number two, can we get lucky? No, come on. No armor trim, but the bottle of enchanting is pretty rare. Oh my God, yes. 
finally. Oh, and I was just flying back and I found another trial ruins, which is actually really good because we've still got three armor trims we need from here. The only place to find them in here is all the way at the bottom. There's the Shaper armor trim. Okay, now hopefully we can find the other two. Ooh, yes, it's the one we've already got. Great. Why do these have to be so rare? Wait, no way. Two back to back and it's a new one. All right, I found another Trail Ruins. Let's hope we can get it in this one. Oh, that's not a good start. Yes! Yes! The Razor armor trim. That is all of them from the Trial Ruins. All right, so with these four armor trims, we now have about half of all the armor trims in the game. But two hours of our 24 hours are now gone. And we're gonna need much rarer items if we're gonna convince my friends that the Dragon Egg is not the rarest item in the game. So I think we'll leave the harder armor trims for later. And instead, let's follow this buried treasure map to find some more rare items. All right, it looks like it's this way. Okay, so it should be somewhere around here. There we go. And we have the Heart of the Sea, which is actually quite a rare item. But to get an even rarer item, we need another one. So we need another map. Yes. And it should be right around here. There we go. Yoink. All right, and we want to use this with some Nautilus shells to craft a conduit. The only problem is we need eight of these shells and we've only got three. So it's time to get fishing. There is only a 3% chance we get one of these shells, so hopefully we can get lucky. Wait a second, when I was killing Drown to get tridents, I actually got a few Nautilus shells. So instead of spending hours fishing, let's build ourselves a Drowned farm. We should have everything we need in here. All right, we're building it in a river biome because that's where Drown spawned the most. And we're building up to Y level 200. All right, so now we place our chests here and hoppers on top, then some slabs. And now we place a hell of a lot of blocks. All right, as you can see, the drown farm is now working. Let's see how long it takes us to get to eight Nautilus shells. All right, there's three more and another three. So we finally have enough to craft up our conduit. There we go. So let's add these items. And keeping with the theme of rare ocean items, the next one is going to be a bucket of puffer fish. The only problem is they are very rare. Oh, puffer fish, where are you? Excuse me, guys. Have you seen a puffer fish? There's so many fish, just not the ones I want. Wait, is that one? No, it's a, it's a frog. Ah, okay. They're only found in lukewarm oceans. This seems like the right biome. There's got to be one around here somewhere. Wait, yes. Oh my God. We found a puffer fish. Let's go. Ow. All right, and that is the puffer fish in a bucket added. I have a feeling that's not going to be the rarest mob in a bucket that we get. But for now, let's try and get the rest of the goat horns. Right now, we have three out of a possible eight. But I'm pretty sure there's only one more that we can get from the outpost. So we're going to need to find a lot of outposts. All right, can we get really lucky? Ooh, that's a really good chest. Do we have this one? Yes, we do. All right, come on. Honda. No. Ooh, a snowy outpost. Does that mean that there's a goat horn in here? No. Oh, we just keep getting duplicates. So I decided to do some research and it turns out there's two types of goat horns. Regular goat horns, which are the ones found in outposts. Meaning there's only one goat horn from the outpost that we need. And that is the field goat horn. All right, come on. No, not even a single goat horn. No, no, no. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Finally, that means we have four out of the eight goat horns, but the other ones we have to get from screaming goats. Now, if you didn't know, there's a 2% chance for a goat to be a screaming goat, which by definition makes these four horns a lot rarer than the other ones. So our first step is to actually find a screaming goat. And for this, we're just gonna hit a bunch of goats. Oh, I thought this was a goat. Is this a screaming goat? That is a screaming goat. <laughs> All right, so in order to get the four screaming goat horns, we need to turn this screaming goat into lots of screaming goats. So for now, this guy can stay here. Then if we grab this regular goat, and then we can breed these two goats and have a 50% chance of this guy being a screaming goat. No, he's just a regular goat. All right, let's try this again. Hopefully, we can get one. All right, what are you saying, little guy? Are you going to scream? Goat number three. Wait, I think this one is a screaming goat. Oh my god, it is! <laughs> what are the chances of that? Well, 2%. So we don't need this guy. Okay, let's just test these. Hopefully, the baby is a screaming goat. 
Yes! Oh my god, it's a screaming goat. Nice. Now we need to build a farm for these guys so we can get their really rare goat horns. We want to mine three blocks from here like this. Add some stone. Then build a little sort of trench around it. Then we'll have a chest here and loads of hoppers leading into this chest. Then we can cover this up with soul sand. Oh my god, he sells a bucket of puffer fish. Are you kidding me? Then place a trap door on there so we can access all the goat horns. Then we want a boat here and we want to fill it with two chickens. So let's hope we get lucky. How did we get no chickens from 16 eggs? Oh my god. And this is where the goats will actually bang their horns. Now we surround the entire farm with fences. And now we can move the goats in. Oh my god, he lost his horn. Yes! <coughs> Ow! But we got the fifth goat horn. Wait, that's kind of weird. <laughs> oh yes! The second horn. Yes, that's six out of the eight horns. And so to get the last two, we should probably keep breeding up these goats. Because the more screaming goats we have, the more chance we've got of getting these horns. <laughs> Wait, what? How did you escape? Yeah, we should probably add a roof on it. Oh, the goats are actually painful. All right, now they are nice and secure. Any new horns? Oh, yes, the seventh horn. Yes! Oh my god, the eighth horn! And we get two in a row, great. So that is all eight horns collected in hardcore Minecraft. So far, we've collected a lot of rare items. And there's still a lot more to collect, including the rarest block in Minecraft, the Deep Slay Emerald Ore block. It's so rare that people have spent tens of hours mining, looking for this block, and still haven't found it. Yeah, that's gonna make this 24 hour challenge really hard. But luckily for us, I've already found this block, so I'm just gonna steal it from here. Some of you might be slightly disappointed with that, but we are running out of time. And to make up for it, I'm also going to collect another extremely rare block. Pink wool from a naturally spawning pink sheep. Now there's only a 0.164% chance of a pink sheep actually spawning, so we're going to have to do a lot of searching. Oh, I keep thinking these pigs are pink sheep. It's not going to be that easy. Oh, why can't you be pink? Ow. Okay, if I was a pink sheep, where would I spawn? Definitely not in the ocean. Oh! <laughs> I keep thinking pigs are sheep. Wait a second. At the end of my 1000 sniffer video, I killed a pink sheep and it dropped pink wool. I'm pretty sure I put it in a shulker box. All right, come on, please. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> pink wool. Oh, that saved us so much time. So now let's try and collect the rest of the armor trims. I'm kind of nervous because one of them has a 1% chance and the only place to get it is in the deep dark. Yeah, we're going to leave that one till last. But now let's get the tide armor trim. To get this one, we're going to need some buckets of milk and some doors because the only place to get it is in an ocean monument. And the only way to get it is by killing an elder guardian. We have a 20% chance. Come on, please. No. Okay, we've got two more chances in this monument. We mine through here. Yes. Ow, 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 ow. Oh my God, that hurts. No. All right, our final chance, please, please. Yes! Oh my god! <laughs> Let's go! So, keeping with the theme of dangerous armor trims to get, next up is the snout armor trim. And the only place to find that is in one of these things. That was actually perfect timing, what the hell? Yeah, so we've got an 8% chance to find them in any of the chests. Stay away from me, stay away, stay away, stay away! Come on! No. Oh no, not what we're looking for, but that is quite rare. Ooh, we're gonna need that later. Alright, bastion number two. Get away from that chest. Yes! Oh my god, thank god. That was very dangerous. Next up, we're going for the Vex armor trim, and to get that, we need to go to a woodland mansion. And of course, this one's rare because there's not very many woodland mansions. Ooh, we're starting to appear on the map. All right, and now we just go straight across. Oh my god, that is cool. And now we should have a 50% chance of getting it in one of these chests. No, not Vexes. Anything but Vexes. Why is there no chests? No. Hello there. Oh my god. No. All right, so I've done a bit of research, and apparently there should be a chest right up here. Okay, come on. Yes! Oh my god. Next up, I had to find a stronghold to find the eye armor trim. And once I did, I continued into the end to find the spire armor trim in an end city. These two were pretty easy, but the wild armor trim was much harder because I had to find a jungle temple. But once I did, the armor trim was pretty easy to find. So now, if we add these trims... We only have two armor trims left, and they are the most rare and the most dangerous because you have to find them in ancient cities. Yeah, even finding the ancient cities is going to be hard. I think our best bet is to go caving. Oh, 
Yes. Okay, we need to be very careful, but we need to search all the chests. Oh, why is it so scary? Oh, yes, the ward armor trim. There was only a 5% chance of that. Now the only armor trim left is the silent armor trim. It's the rarest one in the game, and there is about a 1% chance of it spawning. Oh, this is going to be annoying. <laughs> I really hope we can just get really lucky. We've got another chest. Uh-oh. No! Warden! Oh, this is scary. I'm gonna fly. No, there's another one! Oh my god. This is so scary. I hate this. No! There's another warden. Can he see me? Yeah, I think he can! Come on. Please, we really need the silent trim. Come on, please. No! No, not another one! How many wardens are there? Where is this trim? Come on! Please. No. Oh my God. There's one there. One there. One there. Oh my God. They're everywhere. And I think we've searched all of the chests. Yeah, let's come back for the silence trim later. But now we can add the ward armor trim, a bottle of enchanting, and an enchanted golden apple. But although we are making really good progress, we've only got about 14 hours left until our presentation. And we're going to need much more rare items if I'm going to convince my friends that the dragon egg is actually bad. So to fill up some more of these spaces, how about we collect every music disc? All right. So to get a music disc, we need a skeleton to kill a creeper. Nope. Zombie, don't kill... <laughs> Why is there so many creepers? <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a better way of doing this. So this contraption should help us get all the discs. This will be the pit where all the creepers will go. Then in this glass box, we will put ourselves a skeleton and place some TNT here. And so the skeleton can light the TNT, we will add some lava. All right, that looks good. Now we just need it to be night. Awesome. So first things first, we need a skeleton. Come on. No, spider, leave me alone. Well, I guess first we could just get the creepers in the hole. There's two. Are you kidding me? There's a trident guy now. Of course there is. And of course he drops it. Oh my God. Yeah, nothing happened there. All right, let's just try and get the skeleton in. Yes. Oh my god, yes. Okay, let's try it with five creepers. Come on, just shoot the TNT, please. Oh my god, horse, get out of the way. Oh, yes, yes. Nice. Ooh, that is a lot of music discs. Oh, yeah. Now let's try and do that again, but with loads more creepers. All right, here we go. All right, come on. Oh, oh my god. Yes, yes. <laughs> Let's go. Oh my God, that is so many discs. All right, so we can add all these creeper music discs. And we can also add this one, which we got from the trail ruins earlier. Then when we went in the ancient city, we also got some disc fragments, which we can use to get this music disc. Nice. And finally, we need the pig step music disc. Here we go. That is all of the 16 music discs. Next up is an item that's impossible for me to get. Dragon's breath. Because you see, I can't spawn in the ender dragon again. Because the island would respawn and absolutely demolish my solar system. So I guess we've got a hope we've got some in here. Oh my god, yes! We have some from when we collected every item ages ago. And we can also use this dragon's breath to get ourselves another rare item. All we need is some nether warts. Put three water bottles in here like this. And now if we add this, we should be able to make a lingering potion. Wow, it does so much. Now let's try and complete the horse armor set. We've already got diamond and iron. Well, leather horse armor is going to be easy because apparently you can actually craft it. I didn't know that. And apparently there's no such thing as chainmail horse armor because according to Minecraft, horses get annoyed at the chinking of chainmail rings. Okay, so that just leaves us with gold horse armor. I feel like the best place to find this is going to be inside a nether fortress. Come on. Oh my god, first try. Let's go, that is all the horse armor. But whilst we're here, why don't we make a start on the mob heads? There is a 2.5% chance of these guys dropping their skull. But because we got loot in three, it should be about 8.5%. All right, here we go. Come on, get lucky. Why is my luck so bad? I hear one, but I don't know where it is. Ah, really don't want his head to go into the lava because he's going to drop a head, guaranteed. No. Oh, why did I have to collect the rarest items? Why couldn't it have just been like the coolest items or like the most easy to get items? That'll be pretty fun. We've only got 12 hours left. Come on, we really need this head. Oh my God. Yes, finally. That is the first mob head collected. The second mob head is gonna be a dragon head, which should be easy enough. All we need to do is find an end chip. Here we are. Just gonna... 
Nice. Yeah, the dragon head was just a little bit easier. But now we've got a bit of a problem. Because you need thunder and lightning to get the rest of the mob heads. And, uh, yeah, as you can see... There is no thunder and lightning. So let's leave some space for them and focus on the wither items. But this time, to get the wither heads, we're gonna use this farm. Yeah, I don't fancy wasting another hour. There we go. Yeah, that's much faster. <laughs> All right, so with these withers, there is three rare items that we need to get. The first of which is, of course, a nether star. All right, let's go in for some hits. Let's go, the nether star. Ooh. And diamonds. The second rare item also requires a nether star. So this guy is about to die. Then we can use this nether star to craft ourselves up a beacon. And finally, for the last rare wither item, we want to get a wither rose. So for this, that wither needs to kill an innocent animal. Yes, there it is. Now we should probably kill that guy before he destroys our entire world. Come back. Oh, it's time to go in with the sword. Okay, now we have to kill him. It's us or him. Nice, he's dead. Okay, so that is the wither items added to our presentation wall. And now it's been ages since our last thunderstorm. So I'm thinking we should take our trident with us so that we're ready to get the rest of the mob heads. But for now, let's get the rare turtle items. So for this, we're going to need a bunch of seagrass. And to be honest, for this, I think we just need their eggs. Then if we just make a nice little safe enclosure, we should be able to hatch all of these turtle eggs. And actually, I'm just going to give them a bit more room because when these turtles grow up, they're they're gonna be massive. And now we wait. Let's go, we've got a baby turtle. And once it grows up, we'll get our first rare turtle item. Look at him just climbing over the little eggs. All right, he's just grown up, so we should have a piece of scoot. That is our first rare item from the turtles. But to get our next rare item, we're gonna need five more scoots. I'm just gonna make this area a bit more secure and maybe add some hoppers underneath the eggs. So that way I can AFK and it will collect all the scoot. Perfect, and now we should just be able to go AFK here. I really hope we don't miss a thunderstorm. Wait a second, I've still got my headset on and it's raining. Wait, is this a thunderstorm? How can I test it? Oh my god, it is! Creepers. We need creepers. Okay, supercharged creeper. No, 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 no. Skeleton, come here. Alright, and blow up. No! The skeleton killed it. Alright, supercharged. Nice, nice, nice. Come over here, skeleton. Come on, get in the hole, get in the hole. No! There's two here. Alright, if we can get them here. And now blow up, blow up. Yes! Did we get a mob head? No, they blew each other up. Zombie, get in the hole. There's another one there. Yes, yes, there's a zombie head. Where's the other creeper? There's one there. Nice, we got him. Come on, skeleton. Yes, we got it. The last one we need is a creeper itself. We need to somehow separate these. Yes! There we go, a creeper head. And that is all the mob heads we can get with lightning, apart from the piglin head. But we're gonna have to leave that one to the end. And now we can continue waiting for our turtles to hatch. Okay, so we only have 10 hours left now, and some of these eggs still haven't hatched. I mean, we've still only got one piece of scoot. Why are they taking so long? Apparently, they're meant to take about two hours in real life to hatch. So whilst we're waiting for these guys, why don't we try and get all the banner patterns? All right, the first banner pattern we're going to make is the flower banner pattern, and we can make that like that. Then we can use one of our wither skulls to make the skull charge banner pattern. And sadly, we have to use an enchantment enchanted golden apple to make the thing banner pattern which if you didn't know is actually the mojang wow. logo and then the final banner pattern is the creeper face banner pattern wait a second we've only got one creeper face it's gonna be ages until another thunderstorm wait but when we collected every item before even though it was in like 1.16 we should have a creeper face yes let's go it's kind of annoying to have to do but we're literally running out of time so we've got to do it there we go that is all the banner patterns. And as you might have noticed, we have ran out of space. So we now have one more row reserved for only the rarest of items. And speaking of rare items, it's finally time to attempt to get one of the rarest items in the game, a bucket filled with a blue axolotl. And you may already know there is only a one in 1,200 chance of getting a blue axolotl. This is the item that could make or break this challenge. So it's safe to say I'm I'm very nervous. Ow. So the first step is to find two axolotls to start the breeding process. Okay, this cave looks good. Uh, hopefully we can find an axolotl. Oh, 
There's one. We just need one more so we can start breeding them. Maybe down here. Let's go. We'll collect as many axolotls as we can get. And that should hopefully save us some time. Because I have a feeling getting this axolotl is going to take ages. Okay, let's set ourselves up a nice big pit to breed all these axolotls. Okay, this looks good enough. Now let's fill it up with water. Perfect. And release the axolotls. Now, the reason I set this up right by a tropical ocean is that to breed axolotls, you need tropical fish. So we can easily grab a bunch of these guys, head straight up here to our pits, and easily breed them together. And each time they breed, we have a 1 in 1,200 chance of getting the blue axolotl. Yep, we're gonna be here for a lot of hours. Alright, let's breed them up. Yoink. 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 So whilst I was breeding up the axolotls, I also moved the turtle farm over to where the axolotls are. And this way, we'll be making progress towards the blue axolotl and all the rare turtle items at the same time. Come on, imagine if we just got really, really lucky. All right, I'm going to make some chests so we can store all the tropical fish. We're going to need so many of these. I'm literally taking out entire schools of fish just to feed them to axolotls. But it's going to be so worth it when we get the blue one. All right, we're making good progress. We've now got an entire double chest of tropical fish and the numbers of axolotls are slowly increasing. Ooh, I've just realized we don't have any of those light blue axolotls, which should hopefully make seeing the blue axolotl a lot easier. Okay, it's been about two and a half hours, meaning we've got seven hours left until our presentation. But as you can see, we've made some really good progress. Still no sign of the blue axolotl yet, though. But we do now have 18 scoots, meaning we can craft the turtle helmet. Oh yeah, looks so cool. And then if we get another one of them, we can brew up the rarest potion in the game. And to make it even more rare, let's turn it into a potion of lingering. Why would anyone actually ever get this? So with these three added to the presentation wall, let's get back to the axolotl. I might as well be doing the video I collected a thousand axolotls at this point. Think I'm gonna expand that area a bit. Oh my god, they have so much room for activities now. Still no blue ones though. And it's now another two hours later and there's still no sign of the blue axolotl. And I've resorted to watching movies to keep me sane. Right now I'm watching Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. So comment down below your guys' favorite films and maybe I'll watch them next time I do something like this. I hope I never do something like this again. It's kind of getting difficult for them to breed. So this is where I accidentally killed the blue one. Oh my god. Alright, now they should be able to breed a lot easier. Come on, we've now only got four hours left of our 24 hours. We really need this blue axolotl. Surely we've got to get one soon. I think I just saw one. Maybe if we look from up here. I swear I just saw one. Oh, I can't tell. Maybe it was a pink one, but it, it really looked blue. Not sure if it was the water or not, or just like me hallucinating from breeding axolotls for so long. Come on. Maybe if we take some of the regular ones out, we might be able to find the blue one. Wait. Wait. There it is. It's a baby one. Where's it gone? It was literally in that corner right there. Come on, it's in here. Just where is it? We can't kill them because we'll probably kill it. So uh, let's just start emptying them. There it is. Uh, come on. No. The blue one, please. No. Come back. Oh my God, it's literally playing hide and seek with us. It's right here, it's right here. Stay with it. It's so annoying. Come back, come back. Please, 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 just get in the bucket. Yes, oh my God, I think I got it. Yes, oh my God, no, a zombie. Oh my God, get in the bucket, yes. Let's go, we have the blue axolotl. <laughs> it's so cool. Oh, finally. But there is only two hours left of our 24 hours. This is gonna be hard. And believe it or not, this little guy is not the rarest item you can get in a bucket. Because the chances of getting this exact tropical fish are 1 in 3,584. Wow. Yoink. Because that's how many different variations of tropical fish there are in Minecraft. And so with these items collected, that only leaves us two more items to go. The first of which is the rarest armor trim in the game, the silence armor trim. Which, if you remember, only has a 1% chance of spawning. So it's time to search a lot of ancient cities. Actually, we'll just break all the chests we search. Oh, 
Oh no, that's the ward armor trim. We've already got that. This is definitely the most dangerous item so far. Okay, ancient city number two. Can we get lucky? No. Yes! Oh my god! The silence armor trim! A 1% chance! And there's a warden! No! Anyways, with this last armor trim added, that leaves only one more rare item. The piglin head. But sadly, we only have 20 minutes left of our 24 hours. Which means if it doesn't thunder in the next 20 minutes, we have a 0% chance of completing this challenge in time for our presentation. So I guess all we can do now is hope. I wish I could say a thunderstorm miraculously appeared and we were able to complete the challenge in 24 hours. But in reality, that's not what happened. Instead, I waited for 20 minutes and there was no thunderstorm in sight. So I was about to join the call for my presentation when an idea hit me. I could delay the presentation by saying I meant AM instead of PM. This would give me another 12 hours to get the piglin head. The only question is, would gamers be okay with it? And just like that, I've got 12 more hours. So this time, I'm going to be much more prepared. Firstly, we're going to need a name tag. We need to make sure to name it something cool. And we're going to need one of these. Now we need to trap one of these guys. Come on. Yes. Ow. That kind of hurts. Why do you have to be so angry? And now we name this guy. Oh, yeah. And now we set this side up. Perfect. All we have to do is wait for a thunderstorm. Wait, it's finally thundering. Um, we need a creeper. Come on. All right, this way, creeper. Get in the boat. Nice. Now we can just name tag this guy quickly. No, don't blow up. Make sure he's nice and trapped in there. We need to block this off and somehow get this creeper to go into the portal. Yes. He went through the portal. And now, for the really important bit, we need to make sure we're holding two totems of undying. Eat up. And I think the really important thing is we try and break the boat. Please, Piglin Head, please. No, it didn't kill him. All right, whilst we've still got thunder, let's try it again. I think I know what we did wrong. There's a creeper. All right, follow me. All right. And get in the boat. Yes. All right, trap this off. Name him quickly. No, don't blow up. Let's get him out of the boat. All right, and now somehow get him through the portal. Yes, he's through. But now this time, instead of going through that portal, let's go through a different one. Maybe our frog portal. Okay, and now to get the head, we need to break the boat. Let's make sure we got our chest plate on. Let's use a golden apple and let's do this. The supercharged creeper's right there. We break the boat. I just need to break this boat. Okay. All right, blow up. Wait, the creeper went back through, no. Yes, oh my God, we got it anyway. <laughs> Everything went wrong, but we got it. Let's go. Oh my God, the piglin head. So with the last item complete, it's finally time for the presentation. All right, welcome to my presentation. You think the dragon egg is the rarest item in the game, right? Well, obviously. Well, I'm here to change your mind on that because I've spent the last 24 hours collecting the real rarest items in the game. Wait, how did you even get them? Oh my god. What the hell? I didn't even know you could get a rabbit. From. This is an ocean monument, and this is my upgraded ocean monument. Wow. I think it looks a lot cooler. So that got me thinking, why don't we upgrade every structure in Minecraft? Some of these builds are going to look insanely cool. So let's get started by upgrading the Bastion Remnant. So for this, we're going to need to collect all these blocks. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, let's try and be a little bit safer. Okay, and now that we've got all the materials, we need to find a good place to build it. Wow, this place is absolutely perfect. Yeah, I definitely didn't just build this. But anyways, my idea for this transformation is to turn a regular bastion into more of a nether castle. So let's get to work. And whilst I'm building, let me tell you why I'm actually doing this. You see, my brother has always thought he's a better builder than me. I mean, he literally built this clock tower from scratch in survival. And he's oh called God, a lot of my terrible. builds bad. So to prove to him that I'm actually a good builder, I'm I'm going to show him all the finished upgraded structures. So they really need to look good. Oh, why does it look so bad? Hmm, why don't we start with the easier structures and work our way up to the harder structures? Hopefully this way we can improve our confidence and maybe even increase our skills as a builder. So first up, let's transform the ruined nether portal. 
Oh, my first idea with this is to make it bigger because everyone knows bigger is always better. So we'll grab some obsidian and the biggest the portal can actually be is 23 by 23. So I guess we'll build that. Perfect. That is going to be one big portal. Why is it square? Now let's add some crying obsidian. All right. And now let's break some more obsidian for the gaps. Oh, how I love breaking obsidian. Now to upgrade the decorations. I love how the nether sort of leaks into the overworld, but I don't like how it's only this basic nether biome. So I'm going to change this one biome into all the nether biomes. And to do this, we need to collect them. Okay, and now we just place the biomes around the structure. And it's really important we make it blend into the surroundings. And then we decorate the biome. That's the crimson biome. On the other side, we'll have the warped forest biome. Next up is the soul sand valley with a very miniature fossil. Then the battle delta biome. Add a little bit of lava. And finally, the nether wastelands biome. Add some more decoration. And so that's all the biomes added. So now we've only got a few things left to do. I changed the stone bricks into blackstone bricks because they look a lot cooler. And I replaced the gold blocks with netherite blocks just to flex. And finally, I doubled the chest and added something inside to make it a little bit more rare. And so that is the ruin portal upgraded. So with the ocean monument included, we've now upgraded two out of the 26 Minecraft structures. Yeah. Yeah, we've got a long way to go if I still want to prove that I'm a good builder to my brother. So let's head to the desert to upgrade our next structure, the Desert Pyramid. So for this one, I'm going to try and be a bit more creative. And step number one is changing all this sandstone into blackstone. You might not be able to tell yet, but I'm actually transforming this desert temple into a nuclear desert temple. It's looking really cool already, but step two is changing all this orange stuff into lime green concrete. So we're going to need some lime green dye. Then we combine these dyes and we'll use this to make some lime concrete powder, which we can duplicate using this machine. And now we'll use this machine to turn it into concrete. Nice. I definitely didn't nearly die to a creeper. Oh my god, no! Anyways, for the next step, I'm gonna use some yellow and black concrete to make this look a bit more nuclear. Okay, I think it's very clear this is a nuclear desert pyramid. But to upgrade it even more, let's add some blocks there. We can add a beacon here and some lime green glass. That looks even better. Now I wanna add some cracks in the ground. Hopefully this is gonna look really cool. And finally, this is a nuclear pyramid, so I think it's time we made it a bit more explosive. But before we do that, I've got a question for you. Do you like playing Minecraft with your friends? Well, I've partnered with the best server hosting company in the world to help you with that. Wise Hosting offers 24-7 servers that are powerful, secure, and most of all, reliable, so that you can focus on having fun with your friends. You can choose from locations all across the world to make sure you always get the lowest ping possible. And you can host on Java or Bedrock. So if you want the best server experience, then get yourself a server with the link in the description or by using code LOCKDOWN at checkout. This will give you 25% off all servers. And it'll also help support me to make more awesome videos. But speaking of awesome videos, let's get back to it. So let's remove this pathetic 9 TNT and make a bit more space. Wait a second, we've got loads of TNT on us. This should be a bit faster. And now let's fill this entire hole up with TNT. There is literally over five stacks of TNT down there. And now we'll decorate this room a bit. Okay, and now to finish off this build, we are going to change these chests to trapped chests. Oh my god, this is a very deadly pyramid. This is what it looked like at the start, and this is what it looks like now. Yeah, I think it's slightly better this way. So that's another structure upgraded. But whilst we're in the desert, why don't we upgrade the other desert structure, which is of course the desert well. Yeah, this is one of those structures that definitely is in need of an upgrade. I mean... What is that? Okay, so my inspiration for this is going to be that well from the This Is Sparta clip. Hopefully a lot of you guys know what I mean. All right, so let's lay out the foundations for the well. As you can see, it's going to be a lot bigger than the normal well. And now I want to dig this all the way down to bedrock. So let's get mining. Okay, we're about eight blocks down now and all the sandstone is gone, which is kind of bad because mining stone is a lot slower. Wait, I know what will help. 
And haste two. Oh my god, that's so much better. So now I'm gonna give myself 10 minutes to dig this entire hole. And if I can do it, I'm gonna get a villager from that village and throw him down the hole. Alright, we're about 30 blocks down. I might try just digging straight down. Ooh, this might actually be a lot faster. Oh my god. Ow. Yeah, that method is a lot faster, but this one is a lot safer. <laughs> All right, we're finally at the very bottom of the hole, and I'm not gonna lie, that took 45 minutes. So anyways, we'll use sandstone for the very bottom of the well, and finally, we can fill it up with water. Perfect. This is now a much better well. Oh, I never said anything about not throwing this guy into the well. This is Sparta. So now that's pretty much all the easier structures upgraded. Now it's time to move on to the slightly harder structures. And for that, it's time to head to the end dimension. But luckily for us, we've already transformed some of the end structures. For example, the end spawning platform is now this insane UFO that I'm currently standing inside. And both the obsidian pillars and the exit portal make up my replica of the solar system. That is definitely one of my favorite builds. But... That's not good. Oh my god. I nearly lost my hardcore world. Anyways, that means we're on 7 out of 26 structures, but there are still more structures to transform in the end. The first of which are these gateways. You see, I removed the bedrock on them, but now they're just kind of floating in space with no purpose. So, I've got an idea to upgrade these and make it look like they're an asteroid belt for our solar system. First, we'll grab some iron, because this is going to be an expensive asteroid belt. Next up, we're going to need a hell of a lot of stone, so let's use this machine. And finally, we're gonna need some netherrack to make it look like the asteroid ring is actually on fire. So now we've got everything we need to transform these portal gateways. But how do we actually get down to them? I guess the best way is to build up with dirt. Where is the portal? I don't wanna go through it. <laughs> That would not be good. Okay, it's right here. And now let's build a giant circle under all the gateways. This is only temporary, so it doesn't need to be a perfect circle. Wait, actually, we should probably make it a perfect circle. Otherwise, our asteroid belt is going to look really, really bad. So, a little bit of time has gone by, and I've managed to use some genius math to calculate the perfect circle. The only problem is, it looks like this, and now we've got to build it. If we miss a single one of these pixels, the circle will be off, and we'll have to build it all over again. We went straight under the first gateway, which is definitely a good sign. All right, this is the most likely area we could mess up, because we need to go in a pretty much straight diagonal line okay i think that's right the only way we'll know for sure though is when we get to that block over there Six, seven eight nine ten all right we should be like what the all right after a lot of trial and error we finally have the circle now it's time to actually upgrade this structure so first we'll start with stone and we're basically just going to scatter this around the entire ring want to try and make it look as close as we can to an asteroid belt, just like the ones in our solar system. So we need to make sure we scatter around the stones as randomly as possible. Now we'll move on to iron. This should be a lot faster because we don't have to place any extra dirt blocks. And of course, the final layer is netherrack that has been lit on fire. Hopefully this will make it look a bit more like an asteroid belt. That is not netherrack. Now, all we need to do is get rid of the dirt. Let's go. We've got an asteroid belt. Oh my God, it looks so cool. And the portals look a lot better. But we've still got one more structure to upgrade in the end. And I think you'll be able to guess what it is. It's an NC. I'm looking right at an end city. And I've got a really cool idea for it. But for it to work, we need to find two end cities that are close together. Ooh. Yes. Oh, they'll definitely do. Now, first things first, we can kill all the shulkers in this city. Ow, they kind of hurt. I will get this one. Yes. Oh, no. Ooh. 
Okay, I think that's all of them gone now. So it's time to deconstruct this end city so that we can make space for the brand new upgraded end city. Whilst I'm doing this, let me tell you about my plan. I'm going to completely transform this end city from something that doesn't really look like a city to something that resembles the real life cities in our world. So that's all the materials collected. Now it's time to get building and the first thing we're going to build is the road. So we've got black concrete and we've also got white concrete because we're basing it off New York City. This central area will be like a park and we'll have roads and buildings going all the way around it. So we've got a dig out space for the road. I might have made this city a bit too big because that took me about 20 minutes. Anyways, let's go right ahead and build the road. All right, and now the roads are fully complete, it's time to start working on the skyscrapers. I want to go for a few different designs. So for the first one, we're going to use a bunch of these pillars. All right, that seems like a good height for our first skyscraper. So let's build up the rest of the pillars. Nice. Now in these one block gaps, we're going to add a bunch of these bricks. I really hope we have enough blocks for all these buildings. Okay, that's all the end bricks placed. Now, instead of using just magenta glass, we should probably turn these blocks into glass panes just so we don't run out of blocks because we have a lot more buildings to build. Oh, this is kind of tricky to build with though. And finally, we'll finish it off with some purple blocks as the roof. And done. Yeah, this is definitely going to impress my brother. But we've only done one skyscraper and we've got an entire city to build. So let's get to work. Next up, I'm going to build one over here with a bit more of a stripy design. So we'll have two layers of end stone bricks and then two layers of glass panes. And we'll just keep repeating this pattern all the way up. This next one's going to be a little bit different because it's going to be fatter and it's going to take up this entire corner. So we'll use these blocks and this time I think we'll poke little holes like this for windows and then we'll place glass just behind it so it gives a more 3D effect. And we'll finish it off with some slabs for the roof. Nice. Now, next to this building, I want to build an Enderman car park so that all the Enderman workers that work in this building have somewhere to park. So we'll get rid of the end stone and replace it with concrete. We'll add some white concrete for car parking spaces. But next to this car park, I'm going to build the biggest skyscraper in this entire city. Yeah, this should be high enough. And it's also going to have some insane detail. Why am I doing this to myself? This is going to take so long to build. All right, that's the corner pillars done. Now we need to build in this pattern like this all the way up there. How did I make a mistake already? Silly lockdown life. And the tallest skyscraper is now fully complete. So we've built one, two, three, four buildings and we have about 20 more to build. Ah! And finally, done. This is my upgraded end city. Yeah, I think it looks a little bit better than that. But this upgrade took me a lot longer than I thought. And we've still got loads of structures to upgrade if we're going to impress my brother. So let me know what you guys think of this build in the comments down below. I think it's definitely my favorite one so far. But the next upgrade is going to be a bit more practical because I'm going to upgrade this zombie spawner into an actual functioning zombie farm. So the first step is going to be getting rid of this annoying water. Ah, uh, yes. Now we need to dig out a 9x9 nine nine cube. So this chest has got to go. Ooh, a golden apple. And let's get mining. Nice. Now we can add water along this wall. Then we'll dig out a trench down here. And before we add the water to it, let's dig a tunnel where all the zombies will be transported. Then they'll fall all the way down here. We'll add a chest here. Add a hopper here going into it. And on top, we'll put a half slab. And now we can add water to here and to here. Perfect. Now all that's left to do is remove the torches and we have a fully functioning zombie farm. Oh yeah. Yeah, not gonna lie, that was a pretty easy upgrade. And this next one's not gonna be much different because, well, I've already done it. In my first episode of my hardcore series, I upgraded the standard igloo to this giant igloo. 
glue. And ever since then, it has been my base in this hardcore world. It's got everything I need, including a chimney, a max level enchanting table, and even a family of carrot trading villagers. But up next, we're gonna upgrade this boring shipwreck. Because you see, it's not really much of a shipwreck. It's just a complete ship underwater. I mean, it literally looks brand new. So we're gonna use a lot of different building techniques to make this look like it's been here for many years. And for our first technique, we're gonna need a bunch of this stuff. Okay, and now we'll just scatter this stuff around the entire ship. Make sure we get some inside here and down here even in this little chest room. Okay, next, we're gonna make it look a bit more decrepit by just breaking some random blocks. This should hopefully make it look like it's a bit more worn down. Get rid of some of these trap doors. Couple of holes in the boat that may have caused it to sink in the first place. Okay, that's looking a lot better, but I feel like if a ship was left here for this long, it wouldn't look the same color. So for the logs, we can replace them with these gray acacia logs. And for the planks, we can replace them with disgusting birch planks. Ugh. Okay, so we'll replace some of these like this. We'll even replace some fences and some of the stairs. Wait, why don't we make it so some of these sails have fallen over? That'll make it look a lot more like a shipwreck. Maybe we could have it like this. Oh yeah, that looks good. It looks like it snapped off of there and fell like this. And then we can do the same thing with the other two. And finally, to make sure the shipwreck looks really old, let's add some copper. This way, it should actually age over time. And now with the copper turning green, the shipwreck has been upgraded and made much more realistic. And since we're already in the ocean, why don't we upgrade the most boring ocean structure. I mean, like, what is that? Anyways, for this, I've got a bit of a plan. And my inspiration is going to be the lost city of Atlantis. So to build it, we're gonna need a hell of a lot of quartz. Ow, why did there have to be lava there? All right, so we'll start by upgrading this small structure. So we're gonna use a mixture of different quartz blocks. And... All right, now we're going to build this bigger structure. So we'll start it off with a nice strong base. Don't mind me, just casually drowning. Then we'll cover this bit up. Okay, and now we're going to add some pillars to really make it look like Atlantis. And for these, I think we'll make them quite thick. Hmm, it looks kind of weird. Maybe if we add some skinnier pillars? Okay, yeah, I'm liking that a lot better. Now we'll add the roof and we'll probably also make the base just a little bit wider. Oh yeah, even the drowned are starting to like this place. And speaking of the drowned, when I was building this, a trident drowned actually gave me an idea. What if we built a giant trident going up through the build? I think this will look really cool in Prismarine, and luckily for us, there is an ocean monument right here. Don't mind me, just gonna kill the Elder Guardians quickly. Oh my god, I forgot to put on my chest plate. That hurt a lot. Wait, what? How did that just break? Yes, I can finally break blocks. Yeah, that's definitely a lot better than the normal structure. The next upgrade's got to be even better. So, I'm gonna upgrade a mineshaft into a gigantic quarry. And because it's gonna be absolutely massive, the only way to build it is gonna be with a lot of TNT. But before we go crazy with TNT, let's mark a 64 by 64 area out. And we'll also quickly get rid of the trees. All right, now let's get to work. So I guess at the start, we'll just dig holes and place TNT in them. Here we go. That's a good start, but we're gonna need to blow up a lot more TNT. Okay, we'll just repair the border. And then we want this middle section to go even deeper. So if we just dig long lines like that, all the way down. So basically what I'm doing is trying to make this hole look like a quarry with all the different levels. And then we can start adding all the features of a mine shaft into this quarry. All right, this should make a massive hole. Okay, it's looking a bit messy, so I'm gonna set up a beacon and try and smooth it out to make it look a bit more like a quarry rather than just a messy hole in the ground. Okay, we now have something that looks a little bit more like a quarry. Now we can add all the features of a mineshaft into it. So we're gonna need a bunch of oak wood. Then we'll use some of it to craft some fences. That's not how you craft them. And I'm thinking we can like sort of dig into these walls. Then we'll place wood like this. 
fences like that and kind of make it look like a mine shaft is coming out of this wall. We can add some wood on the floor and we'll do this kind of thing on all the different layers. All right, so we've added all the wooden aspects. Now to add some more detail, let's find a real mineshaft. And here we can grab all the details we're gonna need. So rails, cobwebs. Wait, can you actually get cobwebs? Maybe some ores would be good. Ooh, a chest minecart will be nice. So let's add the final details. And that is the mineshaft upgraded into a gigantic quarry. But this next structure is gonna be a bit smaller because I'm gonna upgrade this witch's hut. And because my brother is quite a big fan of Marvel, we're gonna upgrade this witch's hut into Scarlet Witch's hut. But the first step is luring this witch out of its hut. Do you mind? Ow! All right, witch, get in the hole. Don't kill me. Oh my god. Yes! And next up, we need a lot of red glass. So we'll spam this flower and turn it into loads of red dye. Then we'll duplicate loads of sand. Then we can take all of this sand and smelt it in our super smelter asteroid. And now we can combine this glass with the red dye to get all the red glass we need. My plan is to have this witch's hut floating in the air encased in a massive red glass ball, just like the one Scarlet Witch uses in the Marvel films. So step one is to make this witch's hut float. So let's just gather all the witch's stuff. You really didn't have much stuff. Ow. Okay, I think we'll build it about this high. Now we need to perfectly reconstruct it using all of these blocks. So it goes one, two, three, four four across, two windows on each side, hold on there, crafting table there, then the roof like this. So now that we've got a floating witch's hut, let's surround it with a giant red ball. This is going to be hard because I want the witch's hut to be in the very center of the ball. So if this is the center of the witch's hut, how many blocks up do I need to go? So using some genius maths, I have worked out that we need the sphere to be 21 blocks wide. So now all we need to do is place a thousand blocks of glass in a very specific way to make a giant sphere out of red glass. This is gonna be so easy. Okay, and the final task is moving that witch into its new home. Okay, so first we'll build a nice little staircase. Okay, and we'll build like a tube here so we can easily drop down. Let's do this. Okay, the witch has been released. Follow us. Come on. Oh, I think it gave itself slowness. It's working. Keep coming, witch. No! Why did it drop down? We've got to improvise. No, 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 no! Oh my god. Half a heart. Alright, push, push. Come on, get in the hole. Yes! It's in! And so, with the witch hut upgraded, that is now 15 out of the 26 structures done. But my brother leaves for a holiday in three days, so we need to hurry up. So, over the next couple of hours, I upgraded a pillager outpost into an observatory that can see all of the Minecraft stars. I also fully excavated and restored the trail ruins. I did my best to make sure every room had a purpose and even made the entrance look a lot better. And right now, I was just about to upgrade the jungle temple. But that got me thinking. The jungle temple is one of the coolest structures in Minecraft, but the traps in it aren't very deadly. Ow. So why don't we upgrade this structure by making the traps much more deadly? So first off, we're going to upgrade these arrows. For this, we're going to need some spider's eyes. All right, so what we're trying to do is make some arrows of instant damage. So let's fill these up with lots of water. Fill up the brewing stands. Use some nether wart to make awkward potions. Then we use spider eyes to make potions of poison. Now with some brown mushrooms, and if we turn the sugar cane into sugar, we should be able to make fermented spider eyes. And then using this, we can convert this potion into hopefully instant damage. Wait, poison's pretty good as well, so we'll leave half and half. I think if we use glowstone, we can upgrade the effect to the the second level. Okay, now we grab these potions, and if we surround one potion by some arrows... Wait, what? Oh, you need potion of lingering, which means we need dragon breath. I think we had some last episode when we were collecting the rarest items in the game. Come on. Yes! So we need to make them splash potions first, and then dragon's breath. We have instant damage to arrows. Oh my god, they're going to be so much more deadly. And poison two arrows as well. Now quickly, let's just see how much more deadly this is. Ow. Ow. Oh my god, three hearts of damage. Ow. 
poison too. But that's not all, because I'm also gonna replace this regular chest with a trap chest, and underneath it is gonna be some TNT. So when you open it, you're pretty much dead. Yeah, I don't think I'll test this one. And finally, we have to do a lava trap. So I think here would be a pretty good place for this. So we'll have pressure plates here, and underneath, they should connect to redstone. I'm not very good at this stuff anymore, but hopefully this should work. So if I stand on the pressure plate and walk forward, I fall into the lava. Then we place lava here and here. This jungle temple is now the most deadly jungle temple in the entire world. Oh my god, I am gonna die. Okay, so before I die to my own traps, let's upgrade the next structure. So for the village upgrade, there is a bit of a story. I've traded with villagers in this world thousands of times. And that got me thinking, villagers must be extremely rich, but their houses really don't oh show God. it. So we're gonna change that and reveal just how rich the villagers actually are. Anyways, for this, we're gonna need a hell of a lot of emeralds. Luckily for us, we have the most OP emerald farm in the game. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, three shulker boxes of emeralds should be enough. But we're also gonna need iron. And finally, we're also gonna need some gold from the most OP gold farm in the game. And now that we've got all our materials, the first thing I'm gonna do is replace all the grass with emerald blocks. This is gonna be so expensive. Okay, that's one small section done, but a lot to go. Yeah, that took a lot longer than I thought. In fact, it took so long that we now only have about two days until my brother leaves. So the next step is replacing all the paths with gold blocks. This is literally going to be the most expensive village you've ever seen. Okay, it's really starting to look cool now. But whilst I was building the paths, I noticed there was a lot of zombies. And some of our rich villagers even died to them. Which I don't think is something that should happen in a really rich village. So why don't we hire some bodyguards? we're gonna need for this is a few pumpkins. Oh, this is so satisfying. And bodyguard. Bodyguard number two. Let's try and spread them out over the entire village to keep these guys as safe as possible. You are trapped. Uh, do you want to go on an iron staircase? We'll have some more bodyguards over here. And now that the village is nice and safe, let's upgrade these boring houses. So we'll replace all the boring logs with gold. All the cobblestone will be transformed into iron. There's no iron steps, so I guess that'll do. And finally, the roof will be amethyst. A little bit of roof building ASMR. And its house is completely transformed. Now we've only got to do every other house and building in the entire village. Yay! And finally, we'll use some of our very few diamonds to decorate the most expensive village in the game. We'll even replace these tables with diamonds. The next structure is going to be a little bit different because we're going to transform an abandoned village. But first, we need to find one. I think they might be one of the rarest structures in the game. Okay, I've just done some research and it's even worse than I thought. An abandoned village only has a 2% chance of spawning compared to a regular village. That means if we look at 50 villages, only one of them will be abandoned. Oh my god. God, this is going to take ages. I can't find an abandoned village. So I think the only thing to do is to come back to the abandoned village later. And I guess hopefully we find one whilst we're upgrading the other structures. And speaking of other structures, the next structure we're going to upgrade is, of course, the nether fortress. So let's gather all the blocks we're going to need. And whilst I'm doing this, my totem's going to tell you the plan for this build. So nether fortresses are called fortresses, which means they should be hard to get into. So lockdown is going to upgrade the nether fortress fortress by making it a lot harder to get into. Oh yeah, and of course, it will look cooler too. So first, let's lay out the foundations. So we'll have the first wall, and then we'll have a three block gap of lava, and here will be our second wall. Yeah, we're definitely gonna make this one a lot more secure. Okay, then we'll have another three block lava gap, and this will be the actual fortress. Okay, now we'll start building up these walls, which is gonna take a lot of nether brick. Good job we have about nine shulkers full of it. Alright, we've now built all three walls. So I'm gonna work on the entrance a bit. Oh my god, I am dying in lava. Wait a second. Why don't we do like a parkour entrance? So you have to jump from here to here. 
here to here. And here will be the next entrance. Then over here, we'll have slightly harder parkour. Oh no! Yeah, it's definitely a bit harder. And now to make it to the final entrance, you have to do a Neo jump, which is like this. Oh! Oh! There we go, first try. And this is what it looks like inside the fortress. We're gonna add some cool things in here, but first, let's decorate these walls. Whilst I was mining a bunch of nether bricks, I was growing nether warts, and there is a reason for that. So we'll grab some of this. If you combine nether warts and nether bricks, you get red nether bricks. And we're gonna use these to add a bunch of detail to our walls. All right, the walls are now looking a lot better. Now let's try out this parkour and see if we can do it first time because I've got something to add to the center of this fortress. If I fall, you have to spam L in the comments. But if I do it, definitely spam W. Right, here we go. Yeah, we could just cut that out, right? And now we're gonna use a shulker box of gold and just spam it here. This will be the reward for getting into this fortress. And with this gold block placed, that is the nether fortress upgraded. Now, believe it or not, fossils actually count as Minecraft structures. So, I'm gonna have to upgrade them. And for this, I'm gonna build a massive human ribcage. And I should be pretty good at this, because I actually did human biology at university until I dropped out to play the block game. Anyways, this is gonna look really cool, so I hope gamers will like it. Alright, this is probably gonna be a lot harder than I think, but I guess let's just give it a go. Okay, and this will be the sternum, which connects all the ribs. All right, somehow I have made it look half decent and I'm pretty happy with it because that took me a while. Although I'm really not sure what gamers is going to think of this one. So we're going to have to make these last five upgrades really good. And this next upgrade has brought me to the stronghold. At least I hope it has. Okay, here's the stronghold. Now, where is this portal room? Come on. No, no. Nope. No. Yes, the portal room. These things are actually like mazes. So why don't we build an actual maze with the end portal in the center? And to make it easier, I'm going to build it up in the air so that when you get to the center, you can easily drop down to the portal. But to make this drop down bit, we're going to have to drain some water because it's right above an ocean. So first, let's surround it with blocks. Okay, now we need sponges, but we are very far from home. So I think we'll have to go with the budget option. Go, sand. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. And now it's shovel time. Now let's actually build the maze. And for this, we're going to need loads of these bad boys. And also these. And maybe some of these. The first thing we're going to do is lay out the base for the maze. All right, now it's time to build the actual maze. This will be the entrance. And now we'll start building the layers of walls. And we'll just try and make this maze as hard as possible. Now we need to dig this tunnel all the way down to the portal. We'll add signs across here, like that. Then we'll add water on top, like this. And actually, maybe one more layer of water. Why not three layers of water? This should make it so the fall doesn't kill us. Now we can get rid of this beacon. And finally, we can light the portal. So that is the stronghold upgraded. But because I purposely tried not to remember the maze, I'm going to see how long it takes me to beat it. And whilst I do that, let me tell you about my plan for the next upgrade. So the next structure we're upgrading is the Woodland Mansion. My plan for this is to modernize the mansion and make make it more futuristic. I'm also going to include all the rooms that the traditional mansion includes. So for this, we're going to need lots of white concrete. Yes! And we jump down here and hopefully we survive the fall. Yes, we made it! So for this, we're going to need lots of white concrete. We're also going to need a bunch of birch wood for the floor because it will go really nicely with the modern theme. Okay, we're going to build our modern mansion in this dark oak forest next to this normal woodland mansion. But for this, we're going to need to create some space. Don't mind me just casually starting a forest fire. I think this might actually work. So for this, we're doing loads of different segments that are all different shapes. And this should help it to look like a modern mansion. All right, and now that we've got this basic structure, let's fill in all of these shapes. And now that we've got the shape, let's decorate it. Okay, behind the mansion, we can plant some more trees back. Now it's time to build a bunch of these different rooms inside our mansion. And because it's a modern mansion, we'll do open plan, meaning all the rooms will kind of merge into one. I'm literally just trying 
trying to collect the stuff from the rooms and these guys are so annoying. Yeah, this will definitely look good in our mansion. Okay, I think we've got everything we need. Now let's build some rooms. So I managed to build the storage room, the map table room, the prison room, the tree room, the library room, and even the chicken statue room. Yeah, that one came through the floor a little bit. But anyways, that is the 23rd structure upgraded, meaning we only have three structures remaining until I show my brother all of my hard work. Not gonna lie, I'm starting to get a little nervous. But we don't really have time for that because it's time to upgrade an ancient city. So my idea for this one is like a horror maze. So it will be similar to the stronghold one, just with a bunch of these things inside. Speaking of these things, let's mine them up. Imagine a warden chasing you through a maze. That is gonna be so scary. 15 should be enough. Now, let's collect a bunch of skulk. Oh, this stuff is so satisfying. Wait a second, I've just realized I'm not actually collecting any because my hoe doesn't have silk touch. Oh my god. All right, and now that we've got our maze, there is only one thing left to add. Okay, note to self, do not press unshift. This is gonna be like the world's deadliest maze. Let's give this a go. Okay. Uh-oh. Nope, that's a dead end. No, that's a dead end. Let's go, we made it through. So with the ancient city upgraded, that leaves only two structures left. And the next one is the abandoned village. Now, like we mentioned earlier, this one is very rare. So I had to spend a while searching for it. So my idea for this one is to change it from looking slightly abandoned to looking completely post-apocalyptic. This is gonna be fun. Don't worry, pig, I'll save you. Whoa, I actually did. Remove all the leaves from the trees. Looking good, but one more finishing touch. Perfect. Now there's only one structure left for me to upgrade, and that structure is the bastion. The same structure that I failed to build at the start of this episode. But I feel like my building has got a lot better since then. And I've got a much better idea for it. So, I'm going to take some inspiration from my previous builds and upgrade this last structure. But before I show you the final structure, don't forget to use the link below to get yourself your very own Minecraft server. And of course, use code LOCKDOWN for 25% off. Whilst I was completing this final upgrade, my mind was occupied by three questions. Will gamers actually like this build? Will he appreciate the insane amount of time it took to upgrade every structure in the game? Will he admit I'm actually a decent builder? Well, with the Bastion fully upgraded, it was time to find out. Hello, gamers. Hello. So you know how we used to do 100 days videos together? In them, you'd always build the base because, well, I was a bad builder. Yes. <laughs> I just spent the last two weeks upgrading every Minecraft structure and I want you to judge them. You ready? Yeah, let's have a look. Oh my god, that looks sick. Whoa! Okay, I admit it, you've definitely got a better building. Let's go! Boom. 